world of sports, eh? Oh, he's copped a head right to the nuts. Tedesco's butt crack. Oh, boy. He's nearly taken security's head off. I have no idea what the wasted world of sports is. Wasted world of sports, ahoy! How's everybody? Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh, what a great start to the stream! And tell you what, what a great start to this match! Not for the Bulldogs! They have made a mistake right from the kickoff. I hope everybody is having a fantastic Friday afternoon. The dogs were indeed quite awful last week and they haven't started too well. How are you doing, Dan Jam? Nice to see you there, mate. We've got blood across the eye. I want to see what happened here from the kickoff. A potential high shot. I wasn't watching. Oh, I can't see from that angle. We need a better camera angle than that. This will be the one. Oh, it's a head clash. We've had a head clash from the very first hit up of this game. Why have I got a tick on my multi already? That's not right. I wish it was right. That'd be great. As you can see, Friday afternoon, Cameron McInnes looks a little bit worried. Nico doesn't look worried at all. James, ahoy there, mate. Kent C. Straight, ahoy. Dan Jam, Muppet, Vobsy, UFC Only Fans, Chickens. And that's as high up as I can go at the moment. Cameron McInnes, he might be on report for that. That might get looked at a little more closely later on, but I think for now it's fine. Although the player is still down, by the way. The knee crumbler, ahoy there, mate. The Bulldogs player is now up in a sitting position. Blood. He's got a gusher. Oh, and he's got a big shiner. It is the size of a golf ball. I kid you not, if you cannot see this, it is the size of a golf ball. Cameron McInnes has been moved away. It was just a head clash from the angles that I saw. So I don't think there'll be too much into it. Although, they have been cracking down on that sort of thing, haven't they? Head-on-head -head contact is being cracked down in Rugby Union. I've seen many, many head-on-head -head contact where it's been penalised against the defending team for, for their approach into the tackle still. Ah... <sighs> James says that's a juicy bump. Bloody oath. I've never seen anything quite like it. He clearly got hit in the face because there is a golf ball-sized bleeding bump to prove it. But anyway, scrum down. Sharks do have the ball. Talakai out wide. Can he have another blockbuster of a game? Probably not. I reckon he's only good for one. It's all right. I'm a Shark supporter. I'm allowed to talk bad about them. Good shape out to the right here early, but McInnes... Takes the hit up. So that was an interesting start to the game. Wow. A dropped ball on tackle one on account of a bloody great big shiner. Sharks have it here fifth and last. Oh, they get a six again on the fifth and last. The dogs continuing on right from where they left off last week. And the Sharks, you get the feeling, may need to take advantage of this nice and early to give them confidence going forward. Kafusi with the offload. Still on tackle two here, the Sharks. Now, some, uh, some news from before the game. Royce Hunt, our mate from last week, is out of this contest. Trindle dummies and goes on his own. Nelly sneaks through. Meter short here, Sharks. Out the back to Kennedy. Kennedy brushes off Burton. Taken on the fifth and last. Will Kennedy is in my multi. Hines cut out pass to Ramian, and Ramian is caught by Kikau on tackle five. And they survive. Intriguing start to this contest, though. And now another high shot from McInnes, and this is blowing up. Well, 
I say another high shot from McInnes, but it's another incident in a tackle from Cameron McInnes. And pressure on the neck this time. The penalty is for. And when it's the same player twice in a row like that, you can understand the opposition flaring up a little bit and starting to maybe think that this is on purpose. <laughs> they have come racing in from everywhere to have a crack at Cameron McInnes. Nico Hines, the first on the front line in support for the Sharks. <laughs> it seemed like nobody else gave a damn. Jeez. <sighs> Pressure on the neck. So, yes, essentially a crusher tackle against Cam McInnes there. They just label it all pressure on the neck these days. What a ferocious start to this game, though. The dogs have held on, and on the back of that penalty, they can get themselves out of their own territory, assuming they don't make any mistakes, which is a pretty bold assumption. <laughs> no offense, dogs fans. Salmon Dummies goes on his own. He's caught on tackle five. They're 32 out. Hutchinson on the blind side. Taken by Kennedy. Looking up into the sun. Beats the first tackle, Will Kennedy, but goes nowhere. What's the point of having a tackle break if you earn 0 0.1 of a centimeter? What, what would 0... Would 0 0.1 of a centimeter essentially be a millimeter? It'd probably be even smaller than that anyway. So what, what a conversation. <clears throat> UFC only fans, you got a you received an autograph on a legal dictionary. That is fantastic. That is fabulous. Fifth and last for the Sharks, only making 19 meters off that set. The the dogs fired up after that that crusher tackle. Slash penalty, um, slash pressure on the neck penalty. And it's been the Bulldogs on top since that moment. But they were the ones that came racing in, weren't they? The, dog, the Bulldogs came flying in from everywhere to have a crack at Ken McInnes after that penalty. And they're now going upfield quite easily. Rank outsiders for this game as Burton tries to run and take on the line. Nobody falls for it. Short side for Kikau to Crichton. Crichton with the flick pass. And down the sideline goes Connor Tracy, fifth and last. They're 20 out here. The Bulldogs looking a lot more slick with ball in hand this week. Burton with the crossfield kick. It's not really deep enough. And it's taken easily at the back by Mulatalo because none of the Bulldogs players could get through to compete. The stalemate resumes. Gamer Mel, ahoy mate. How are you doing? Referee blows his whistle for time off again. What have we got here? A TMO report, perhaps it sounds like. Is somebody else going on report? Yes, it does seem like it. And it's Cameron McInnes standing in front of the referee. On report and 10 in the bin for Nikora. It seems like we're going back a little way for that. The TMO has had a word. With the referee on field, we've gone back for something. Nakora's not happy about it. Oh, it's late. Sh a late shoulder contact on Kikau. He did eventually, eventually, just by sheer force, I think, wrapped his arm around Kikau. In the end, I feel like it was pretty... I feel like it was pretty obvious he's, he's led with the shoulder quite clearly. And that's probably the fair call. He's clearly led with the shoulder. Even though the arm did swing around, I think that was purely incidental, to be honest, that his arm swung around. You could tell from the way that he led in with that left shoulder, he had, he had no intention of making a proper tackle. 
And the Bulldogs. It's been all doggies since that crusher tackle down the other end. Can they make the Sharks pay? Tackle three. They're 10 metres out. Tackle four now. Just a couple of metres short. The crash ball, probably not the option. They must go wide to the left now. They're looking left, right. Marnie sends it out to Burton. Burton, dummy, steps back inside. Takes on Kennedy, gets the offload to Viliami. Kick out and kick out. He was due for a try. Oh, we're looking at potential obstruction. He was due for a try, though, kick out. DJ Shaq, uh, shoulder charge. A pretty blatant one at that. Yeah, what I said, James, was that it looked incidental, his arm coming around afterwards. That's what I was saying, looked incidental. Not the Conte, it was a blatant shoulder charge. Mr. Ed's dead, ahoy! And we've got obstruction here from the referee. So this is going to be very interesting. Braden Trindle has been obstructed by the referee. I think this is going to get taken away. I do believe this try is going to get scrubbed out, which makes me very happy that uh, uh, Kickout's not in my multi because I would have been quite angry. No try. We've got referee obstructing the players. And Kikau's dry spell continues. The referee in terrible position. Does that rule apply for streakers also? Yes, it does. Fifth and last, the Sharks survive, but only just. <clears throat> and a penalty to the Sharks. This game's going to blow up. It really is. And, and here we go. The push and shove. The shirt pulling. It's on again out there in the middle. Bring back the biff, I say. And we would have seen a biff already in this one, if you were allowed. There are some very, very tense and uptight players out there at the moment. Uh, DJ Shaq says, I know the rules in rugby are if there's an accidental collision with the ref, it's awarded to the attacking team. Yes, and that's, a, yeah, that's exactly what happened here as well. The referee created the space, created the gap, so we came back for the Bulldogs to have their last tackle. Ten metres out, I think they, they started. Yeah, James, do you remember the streaker in State of Origin? <laughs> that big uh, that big dude that got in the way of the play Queensland tried to claim a try Queensland still to this day claim that uh, play should have been allowed to go on it's like play can't go on there's a big fat naked dude in the middle of the field nice kick in behind the line there by Trindle and the Sharks have turned it around and got the Bulldogs Pinned down on their own goal line again. It was pretty bad. Like, well, DJ Shaq, if Reese Walsh didn't get sent off the other week, there's no way that Nakora can get sent off for it. It wasn't that bad. It's not like he took him high or anything, but it was he blatantly led with the left shoulder. So uh, 10 minutes is very much justified. But... Um, Oh, look at the look at the anger in the eyes of Viliami Kikau. This game is on a razor's edge. There is going to be a dust up. I'm sure. I know you're not allowed to punch anybody anymore, but I get the feeling there's going to be a flare up. And that was called a high shot against Viliami Kikau. It was just a brush of the fingers across the shoulder. 
There are some very harsh calls going on at the moment. You get the feeling that that is the referee just setting the boundaries and just trying to calm things down. But what he is, in fact, doing is making things worse by making the wrong calls. McKinnis beats the first up tackle. The Sharks have it. This game, oh, it could explode at any minute. Hines with the short pass. Six again for inside the 10 meters. The Sharks. Hines takes it to the line. Short ball to Talakai. Talakai can't break through. Tackle two. 10 meters out. Hines completely clueless there. The Sharks, they all got in each other's way and had nothing to, uh, to show for it. At the end of that, Trendor with the flat pass almost puts Teague Wilton through. And the crash ball from Kafusi. Kafusi, please, please go back to Parramatta. Kafusi drops it and the Bulldogs go quickly. Stephen Crichton's away and it surrenders in the tackle so that he doesn't slide into touch. Ahoy there, Blake. How are you doing, mate? Burton in midfield, looking for a runner. Finds a bounce pass out wide to Karaz. It's a six again for the Bulldogs now. Oh, try and keep up with this game, would you? <laughs> this is incredibly frantic. From one end to the other. Penalty, penalty. Six again, six again. Walnut Hills. Ahoy, buddy. How are you going? Through the hands now. Kick out. Wants that try. He's... Determined for that try that got scrubbed out earlier. Tackle three. They're five metres out. The Bulldogs looking much more impressive than last week. Dummy and going on his own and almost through a salmon. So close to the line. And the Bulldogs get a penalty right in front. Take the two. Take the two. Take the two. Take the two. Penalty for hands on the ball. I think that requires a... Whoops. I think that requires a little further expl explanation. <laughs> Otherwise, it just says penalty touching the ball. There'll be no touching of the ball, but that was obviously in defense. And speaking of defense, that was a huge hit from Teague Wilton. Put on Max King. Lucas uploads. Ahoy, mate. The Bulldogs are close. Tackle three. This pace cannot keep up for the whole game. They've created an overlap and into the corner. Stepping back in field is Blake Wilson. Tell me I had Blake Wilson in the multi. The Bulldogs score first. The Sharks defense cracks. I don't think I do have Blake Wilson in my multi. Bugger it. Damn it, I don't. Blake Taft down in back play. He got cleaned up by the looks of it. Yes, he did. A big shot from... Who was that out there? Katoa. I know it would have been Mulatalo out on that edge. Four points to nil. Kick to come. Sharks. A man in the bin, remember? Or... Probably a little bit left. Uh, did I tip the Bulldogs? No, I think the Sharks will get the job done at home, but uh, it always makes me nervous because I'm not supposed to have confidence in the Sharks winning. It's just not meant to happen. DJ Shaq. Just watch the incident. He could have very nearly been dismissed. The only mitigating factor is the slight drop just before contact, but it's not marginal. Oh, I don't think he hit kick out high. Uh, it was the penalty was the penalty. I believe was just for the shoulder. I don't. If it was shoulder to the head, he would have been off definitely. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could be wrong about that. I don't don't believe there was head contact, though. Burton hooks this ball around, just shaves inside the upright. And the Bulldogs looking a lot better than last week, leading six points to nil. 
Oh, what's my opinion on the 2006 Cronella Beach riots? Wasn't paying too much attention, to be perfectly honest, UFC. Back in 2006, what would I have been doing? Certainly not following along with any news. <laughs> I would have been, I would have been uh, definitely playing video games, definitely drinking. But uh, yeah, not too sure. <laughs> well, I wasn't there, was I, UFC? So <laughs> I might not have just been chilling with my drinks and playing video games if I were actually there. But uh, I'm nowhere near, nowhere near where that took place. And not watching or keeping up to date with the news. Yeah, not uh, not something that I can... Not something I can really comment on one way or another because I still don't really know all that much about it. Fifth and last for the Bulldogs. A nice set of six after points for them. Up to halfway. A pressuring kick on Will Kennedy. Big hit from Kikau. Kikau's been fired up ever since he had that try disallowed. And for the Sharks, they just need to get through this period with Nikora in the sin bin with minimal damage. I'll tell you who was always fantastic at keeping the damage to a minimum with a player, and sometimes even more than one player in the sin bin, were the All Blacks. You just got the feeling that the All Blacks in their prime, Richie McCaw, Dan Carter years, even if you were playing 15 on 13, they had their defensive patterns down and backed themselves. The All Blacks would score tries when they had players in the bin. It was just incredible. It was an incredible All Blacks team, that Richie McCaw DC era. Bulldogs with the ball back, and the Sharks are back to a full complement now. Nicker back on the field. Kick out, keeps it alive to Burton. Salmon out to Crichton. Crichton fires it back crossfield to Taff. Taff stepping, weaving, fooling absolutely nobody. Burton fifth and last, puts it high. Kennedy takes it. Yeah, that's right, UFC. It doesn't take very long for those to get shut down by YouTube. Kent C. Strait says, Some would say our greatest rugby team of all time when Richie was skipper. I would say that as well. They absolutely were the greatest. I actually, I actually think that... Um, I actually think that the guy, the guy illegally sharing the game footage on YouTube, it was probably that guy. <laughs> he probably owns the channel and he's trying to promote and get, uh, get views for it on other channels. Tackle four here for the Sharks. Oh, and that's a, tr that's a troubling tackle, surely. By Salmon. Fifth and last... Hines puts it high into the corner. And a penalty to the Bulldogs. The Sharks cannot... Oh, it's a penalty to the Sharks. The Sharks were getting ready to blow up at the referee. But I think he had his hand out the wrong way. Gamer Mel says, need Sharks to win. Kennedy, Molotalo, Katoa, and Crichton to win your big bet. Well, that would be an extremely large bet. That'd be a very large bet, wouldn't it? That's a lot of try scorers. I need a few of those myself. No consideration of taking the two points. 
They tap and go, the Sharks. Kanye Ketchup says, it's the type of game even a wild better like me won't touch. I hear you, Kanye Ketchup. I hear you. Dean loves stuff. Ahoy, mate. Oh, this opened up here for the Sharks. Through the hands they go, or they needed to go. And Teague Wilton is copped high. Vobsy, ahoy, mate. Teague Wilton's been copped high here. Another penalty. Oh, they have to strike back here, the Sharks, you would think. This is a lot of pressure. If they don't turn this into points, they tap and go again. Toby Rudolph driving towards the line. They're a meter short. Hines to Kafusi. Kafusi holds on to the ball this time, Oregon Kafusi. Good job. Braley to McInnes. McInnes turns, offloads, and Rudolph has it back again. Tackle three. Out the back to Trindle. Flat pass to Talakai, and Talakai loses it forward. Lost forward. And the Sharks, they've, they've had nothing to offer on attack close to the line other than that changing the line back inside, changing the angle, and short pass off the shoulder. Dropped ball. Well, happy birthday for tomorrow, Dean Loves Stuff. I hope you have a cracking day. You got any big plans for celebration? Scrum down for the Bulldogs here. 10 out from their own line. Driven backwards in a two-man tackle. And it's the Bulldogs still leading six points to nil. Yeah, the Sharks just need to be a little bit more adventurous when they're that close to the line. It's been very predictable. Just the... the and a penalty to the Bulldogs. A relieving one. More penalties. This will surely be going into the sheds with the highest penalty count of any game that I've ever seen. <sighs> 19 minutes to go until halftime. How many more penalties will there be? Muppet says, happy birthday to Dean. Get a captain. Get a captain in ya. The old Captain Morgans. Nice touch finder here from the Bulldogs. About 20 or 30 metres upfield. And they're on the attack again. Flat pass inside from Burton. Tackle two. 30 metres out from the Sharks line. Looking to extend their lead. Hutchinson with the inside pa pass two. Preston. Jacob Preston. Salmon goes on his own. He's had a lot of runs, Jamin Salmon. He has touched the ball a lot in the first quarter of this match. Dean loves stuff, says, thanks, guys. All of yous are great. No worries, Dean. I, I, do, I do truly believe that this is a great little community that we've got here going on at the Wasted Water Sports as Nico Hines is taken in the air claiming that high ball and a penalty to the Sharks more penalties jeez imagine if you were doing a drinking game right and you had to do a shot for every penalty I think you'd be calling the ambulance right about now get the stomach pump out I feel like almost every second set of six has yielded a penalty. But this allows the Sharks to get out of their own end. And up over halfway now with Hazleton. Keep an eye on that headband of Hazleton. That will not be there later in the game. Guaranteed. Oh, McInnes falls over Salmon. Heel fries. Ahoy, mate. Hey. How are you feeling about tonight? Heel fries as Wilton breaks straight through. He's got support from Braden Trindle, and Braden Trindle scores. Oh, why didn't I have him in my multi either?
Trendle. Nice try there. It was set up from Teague Wilton, though. Uh, yeah, well, that answers my question, Heel Fries. I was uh, asking, I was going to ask, how you feel about tonight? How's the the confidence after that absolute clinic that the Eels put on in round one? The Eels were scary good, weren't they? I mean, I was really impressed for most of the game. They had their little lull for about 10 minutes, but then they switched straight back on and just ran away with the game. There is a tick of Vobsy's multi. Lucky Vobsy. Well, oh, well, I could get uh, a partial tick, depending on how this conversion goes, because I've got Nico Hines for six plus points. Nico Hines for six plus. Heel Fry says, just got to watch out for the 60th minute to the 70th minute. That's when we switch off. And that just so happens to be the period of time that generally the Panthers are at their most lethal. Oh, Hines guides it straight through the middle. Straight through the middle. I'm actually... Uh, look, I'm on the fence at the moment because Penrith do have the home game. But uh, I... I'm thinking I wouldn't be surprised at all if Parramatta win this one. I really wouldn't. The Panthers showed last year that they are willing to just ease into their ease into their year, ease into their systems and whatnot. They've got a couple of new combinations there. Burton gets us back underway. We're all locked up at six all here. Trendle to whoever that is. Jack Williams. He plays for my my team, and I don't even know who he is. Well, I know who he is now that I've seen the name. I just didn't recognize him at all. And I've done that multiple times the past couple of seasons. Dal Fanukan getting ready on the sideline. Dean loves stuff. You've just got to say something. Go Souths. Well, Souths were atrocious last night, weren't they? As Hazelton makes a break. He's taken down on the fifth and last. Hines on the short side. Puts it high. The kick chase is good. Pressure at the back on Taff. It falls for Katoa. And Katoa is dragged over the sideline. Knocked on by the Bulldogs. So the Sharks will get the ball back. More pressure incoming here. Oh, a captain's challenge from the Bulldogs. Taff is convinced that he did not touch this ball. And this is a big captain's challenge. There's still 14 minutes to go till halftime. Taff would want to be absolutely certain, dead set certain that he didn't touch this. Or the Bulldogs have just blown their challenge. And you've got to say from that angle, it looked like he touched it. And a very concerned look on the face of Blake Taff now. After he's just seen that camera angle like the rest of us. He's definitely got a touch on that from that camera angle. What's everyone's favorite food? What an odd question on a on a an NRL stream. But that's fine. No problem there at all. Uh, I'm a uh, uh, probably comes as no surprise, but uh my favorite my favorite um cuisine is Korean. Ah. Uh, kimchi pancakes, the spicy fried chicken. Bulgogi. Scrum down for the Sharks. They are unsuccessful in their challenge, the Bulldogs. 
So that's their challenge done and dusted, nice and early. McKinnis steps back in field. Tackle two for the Sharks here, 10 metres out. Braley sends it right, Hines puts it back in field. Williams, Jack Williams. I actually knew who it was that time. Hazelton looking for the crash ball try, backs into the defence, takes three or four defenders to put him down. Trindall to nobody at the back. Hines has to retreat and dive on it. A waste of a play there from the Sharks. Fifth and last. Trindle puts it high for the corner. Tapped back from Ramian, but straight to the waiting hands of... Wait for it, wait for it. The waiting hands of Josh Curran. Don't tell me Fanukin's off already. Oh, no, he's only just coming on. Okay. Took a while for him to get down there and get on the field. Six points all that remains. 12 minutes to go till the break in what has been a very, very tense and close encounter here at Shark Park. A kick on tackle four from Burton. Finds some space. Plenty of open space. Katoa fires it back to Kennedy who was in a, a much better position than, than himself. And Kennedy brings it back for the Sharks. And here comes Dale Finucane finally onto the field. It took him an eternity to get out there. I'm pretty sure I said he was warming up half an hour ago. And for his first hit up, he goes straight at Viliami Kikau. Hazelton doing a lot of hard work, hard work early. Fifth and last for the Sharks. They're 40 out. Hines just kicking for territory. Bounces it in front of Taff. Taff looks up and has absolutely nowhere to go as a wall of Sharks defenders is there to meet him. Probably not a bad option from Hines, really. I mean, he kicked it straight to Taff, but he made sure that it was awkward and on the bounce. And you never know. You just never know in a situation like that. Blake Taff could very easily drop that. Who knows what could happen. Bulldogs with the offload. Keeping it alive. Chewing off some extra meters. Hutchinson is caught. Tackle four. They go up over halfway now. Kurt Mann on the field. Fifth and last. Burton puts it high. Very high. Kick out. Chasing through. Lines up Will Kennedy and connects. But we've got a penalty to the Bulldogs and it's flaring up again here. The players come together and go at it again. Burton's been taken out after the kick, I think is the penalty here to the Bulldogs. Nakora's got to be careful because he's already been off once. Surely they take the two here. It is very tense out there. We might have a new rivalry on our hands. I think Nakora's getting sent off here. I think Nakora is getting sent off. He's already been in the bin for 10. Oh, no, he's just called the captains out. The referees just called the captains out, I think, to tell them to have a calm down and stop acting like children and get on with the game. Penalty right in the front for the Bulldogs. The referee was just laying down the law. Surely you take the two here. This is a prime opportunity to take the two. They tap and go. Tackle one, Marnie runs sideways, feeds it off to Salmon. Seven is picked up and dumped just to the left of the up uprights. Bulldogs on the attack still. Plenty of tackles up their sleeve here. Just settling things down in front of the post. Marnie, they go left again. Hutchinson out the back to nobody. Burton has to turn around and retreat to collect the ball. Beats one tackle. Still alive here, Burton. 
Cut out pass over to Karaz. Karaz is caught 10 meters out on the far side of the field. Tackle four. Hutchinson straightens, goes for a little run on his own. Fifth and last Bulldogs. Five out, Marnie will put the grubber kick into the end goal. It sits up nicely for Trindle, and Trindle dives back into the field of play. Oh, Braden Trindle. Please, someone explain to me how and why Braden Trindle was kept out of the starting squad for so long by Matt Moylan. Can anybody explain that to me? Ahoy, Michelle. Ah. <sighs> How are things going a couple of suburbs over? This game is going to explode in the second half. You can just feel it. They're going to bring back the Biff. And uh, yes, as I was saying, we might have a new rivalry on our hands here. These two teams clearly now hate each other. The knee crumbler says they kept him out so as not to shame the rest of the competition. <laughs> well, I don't think he's that good, but he's going going quite well. Definitely better than poor Matt Moylan. Jeez, I was into him, wasn't I? I let rip quite a few times at Matt Moylan. My target this year is very obviously going to be Royce Hunt. We expected a close game. Kept Moylan for the experience. The experience of what? Being crap? That's not the experience you want. It certainly kept the games interesting. <laughs> Sharks ahead. Sharks ahead by four points or something going into the last 10 minutes and you're just waiting for the Matt Moylan mistake through the hands and Blake Wilson dives looking for number two. I was paying no attention to it because you thought he had nowhere to go. There was no way he was getting through there, but he supermans through the air and plants it down in the corner for his second and the Bulldogs. The Sharks aren't playing badly. It's just the Bulldogs are playing so much better than last week. Just like we expected. And this game is going to go down to the wire. The Bulldogs back in the lead. A Blake Wilson double. It's gone up as a try. The TMO will just have a look. A, a little look here to see that he does get it down. Oh, he might have put a foot on the line here. This is going to require closer examination. He might have put a foot on the line. This one is not guaranteed yet. He's in, he's in, he's out. And Blake Wilson will have this try scrubbed out. The second try to be scrubbed out for the Bulldogs. And it's going to remain six points all with six minutes to go until the halftime break. Don't forget, double header tonight. So coming up straight after this one, Panthers versus the Eels. And that's going to be another tense encounter. It could be the night of Biff. The night that Biff came back to the NRL. So the Sharks survive a little scare there. It remains six points all, approaching half time. Big drive here from Williams. He's still going, but ends up getting driven backwards about three meters. Braley from dummy half to Hazelton. Hazelton still got the still got the the head tape on. Hines will kick on tackle four. It's touched by the Bulldogs. Deflection. And that's a good result for Canterbury. They start this set on halfway. Turned out to be a terrible kick there from Hines. 
Not that he was purposely kicking for the deflection, but yes, it definitely didn't work out for them. There, the Sharks tackle three for the Bulldogs. They're traveling slowly upfield, though. Good defense from the Sharks. Oh, what a charge from Preston. He took on Braden Trindle, and he won. Trindle comes back at him, though, for a second attempt. What a run from Jacob Preston, though. But that's what you've got to do. Find the smallest guy on the field and run at him. As Kekau nearly breaks through. He is determined, Kekau, today. He wants a try. Fifth and last. Burton puts it high. It's into the end goal. Back we go for a seven tackle set. Molotalo taps and goes straight up the middle. Molotalo's only got one to beat. And he can't quite get the job done there. He had to step back in field. And they were able to bring him down from behind. Now here goes Ramian on a charge. A stupid offload to Katoa. And they'll lose ground here, the Sharks. Hines is pointing in field. He knows where he wants the ball. They didn't go there, though. Katoa went his own way. Molotalo was away there. He just needed to gas it. Hazelton's on the short side. Tries to run over the top of Marnie. A great legs tackle. Oh, Kikau's come away very, very awkwardly from that tackle. The Sharks have got an overlap here. Through the hands, it goes to Molotalo. Kicks back in field. And it's going to sit up for Teague Wilton. He just needed to dive onto the stupid big goof. What a moron. He just needed to fall on the ball. He stood there looking at it for the Bulldogs to come back and get there and tap the ball dead and ground it from right underneath. He just needs to fall onto the big galoot. Ah. Oh. Just fall on the ball, you great big lughead. Might not have been Teague Wilton. It was. <laughs> Teague Wilton and Jack Williams look so much alike. Yeah, Kikau is favoring the shoulder there. He is definitely not at 100%. The Bulldogs survive. The Sharks have blown a dead set certain try there. Teague Wilton. Public enemy number one with me. After that, I can lay off Royce Hunt for a bit. Hazelton takes an Aussie rules mark. Risky take of the ball there. He holds onto it though. Lucky for him. Sharks have it with three and a half minutes to go. 30 out from the line. Braley breaks short side. Kennedy. Dummies. Finds a little bit of space. Gets the Sharks well within striking distance here. Inside the 20. A few tackles up their sleeve. Finucane. Just settles things in front of the post. Braley sends it to Trindle. Trindle. Out the back to Hines. Hines to Ramian. Ramian takes on Crichton. Who's going to win that one, do you think? Crichton holds firm in the tackle. Looks for the one-on-one -on -one steal. Can't get it. Fifth and last. Sharks. Katoa goes for a dart from dummy half. And that was stupidity at its finest. Once more from the Sharks. And the Bulldogs hold on. Only just hold on. As Matt Burton is down with cramp. And we saw that last night too, didn't we? We saw the double cramp. The double cramp up. Bulldogs trapped on their own goal line again here. With two and a half minutes to go till the break, it is looking ever likely that this is going into halftime at six points all. Hutchinson kicks on tackle three. Looking for a 40-20. Was nowhere near it, but it's safely into touch. Two minutes to go till the break. What a tough old game this has been. Six points all. A couple of tries scratched, uh, scratched out for the Bulldogs. Kick out scoring off an obstruction from the referee. And Blake Wilson just putting a foot on the touchline. And the Sharks have absolutely bombed one. Big news here. Kick out is leaving the field. Vidliami Kikau has been replaced by Samuel Hughes. And Kikau did not look 100% for sure. 
So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Kick out would be a big loss for the Bulldogs should he be rubbed out of this game. Up towards halfway now, the Sharks. Hines at the back to Trindle to Kennedy. Talakai was looking for the quick pass to put Mulatalo sailing down the sideline. He couldn't get it free. He's also copped a knock there, Talakai. Now Hines puts the kick through. Kennedy gets in front of Taff, puts the pressure on. They can't come away with it, though, and they've knocked it on, the Sharks. But that was something a little bit different, at least. At least they put some pressure on. The Bulldogs survive. But that was better stuff from the Sharks. A little bit of variety on attack. That's what you want to see. Lots of tired bodies out there. There'll be one or two more plays before the break. Do the Bulldogs throw caution to the wind here? Probably not. Oh, Karaz has lost it. Karaz has lost it. And the Sharks need to race back over here and pack this scrum down. They will get one last play at it. Are they going to go drop goal? This is all the game needs right now is a droppy from the scrum for the Sharks to go in leading seven points to six. Oh, it's flared up again between these two teams. These two teams hate each other quite clearly. There is a lot of tension out there. Karaz needs to be careful to not give away a penalty to back up the mistake he just made. And Trindle was letting him know about it. Good mistake, mate. Give us that last shot before half time. Thank you very much for that. 22 seconds left. Can the Sharks make the Bulldogs pay for that ma big mistake right before the break? And once again, the referee has called the captains over, and this will be the final warning. He's already had words with them. Oh, they've got a penalty here, the Sharks. So Karaz has given away the penalty now. No, it's just a scrum. I thought so. He had his hand out, I thought, for a penalty. But uh, he was just signaling which way the scrum feed goes. Now, 22 seconds. The Sharks can set up for a field goal. They can run some plays. Or they can just run one out and get tackled. <laughs> and that takes Hines out of play. 13 seconds for Nukin. Sets a, they're not even trying anything here, the Sharks. They're going to have a snap a drop goal here, I suspect. No, they haven't even been smart enough to do that. Hines is caught with the ball. Back to Wilton. This will be the last tackle of the half. And the Sharks just surrender. I, I mean, at least try something. Fitzy, have words with the boys at half time. I mean, that was just crap. They had the ball. They had 22 seconds to launch an attack before the halftime break, or at the very least, take the quick snap at drop goal. But instead, they went one out from the scrum. They went one out from the ensuing play, offloaded to a player who just ran into contact. What was the point? They may as well have just said, no thanks, we'll take the halftime break. Okay. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. I have no words what I just witnessed. I had been talking earlier about how clueless the Sharks looked on attack close to the line, and that pretty much just summed it up. My first thought was they're going to take the drop goal because they're only going to have one play. The first tackle happened so quickly. They had another couple of shots at it. At least fire off a set play. Try something. Not just one out and go into contact. Unbelievable. Six points all at halftime here. Zero ticks off the multi. It's another one that's not looking good at all. <laughs> but this game could open up in the second half. There was a lot of defense 
A lot of goal line defense from both teams. The game threatens to flare up. It threatens to open up. Fingers crossed for a better second half. I mean, well, when I say better second half, I just mean in, in terms of for the multi and uh, for scoring and and stuff like that. Not uh, Not just one out through the hands stuff that we were bearing witness to here. That was no good at all. But anyway, we'll see what the second half brings. I'm going to have a quick break. <laughs> Bobsy wants to see every single player on the field score. I'd be happy with that. If that happened, it would be a guaranteed tick on all four legs and a win in the multi. So I would be very happy with that. I'm going to have a quick break and we'll be back for the second half action here. Sharks, Bulldogs, six points all. We knew it would be close. Oh, well, we didn't know. We predicted it would be close. And that part of it is living up to expectation. But everything else has been very, very hard to pick indeed. What will the second half bring? We'll find out after this on the Waste of World of Sports. Halftime here, six all. I'll catch you after the break.
All right, half time here, six points all. Welcome back, Wasted World of Sports. Ahoy, how's everybody doing? Ivan Storm, ahoy, mate. Oh, Storm must be very happy. A very happy Ivan, I'm sure, after that effort against the Panthers in round one. What, that defensive effort, at least. Don't know that the attack was really worth any chop, but we'll see. Six points all at half time here. We knew it was going to be close. We talked about it at the top of the stream. The Bulldogs were always going to be better than they were last week because, let's face it, they couldn't really be much worse. The Sharks, they haven't been bad. Oh, there was almost head contact there from that camera angle. I see, I see. We're just looking at that shoulder charge from earlier. Yeah, I think Nicaro might be in a little bit of trouble with the match review committee. And uh, I've got to say, a DJ Shack, I think it was, pointed out the, the head contact. I did not notice it at the time. But there you go. Seeing that replay, there did look to be high contact. For sure. The Sharks have butchered a try. The Bulldogs have had a couple of tries scrubbed off. <sighs> Completion rate's been about the same for both teams. Line breaks, 3-2 to two in favor of the Sharks. 20 missed tackles to 21. It's all very even. Five penalties apiece. The Sharks have had way more tackles inside the opposition 20-meter zone. So I would have to say that stat alone. Pressure is on the Sharks here in the second half. They need to start making some of these plays stick. They need to show some variety. That's been the most disappointing thing. They seem to do well in between the 40-meter lines or coming out of their own end, but they just completely lose the plot. They seem completely headless. When they get inside the Bulldogs' 20-meter line, they seem to have no idea of what to do, no set piece, nothing. They were, were very insistent on that short ball off the shoulder, with a, a big forward running on a changed angle back towards the line, crash ball. I would say it's pretty even, James. I have to, based on that one single stat, though, I have to give it the, the edge goes to the Bulldogs, just based on that statistic of the, uh, the Sharks. Of, is that Jason Taylor? Well, I'll be damned. The... Um, the Sharks have had almost, almost double the amount of tackles inside the Bulldogs' 20-meter zone as the Bulldogs have had in the Sharks' 20-meter zone, which really says to me, being six points, six points all, they have bombed a try already, but it just says to me that they don't really have any idea how to break across the line. And in a situation like that, you have to give the edge to the defensive team. They've looked far more likely to score tries, the Bulldogs, in their 19 trips down inside the Sharks' 20-meter zone. So slight edge to the Bulldogs, in my opinion, but only ever so slight. Apart from that, a very, very even game all around. Should be an exciting second half. Fingers crossed. <laughs> But yeah, five penalties apiece. Insane. Carvey Bar, ahoy, mate. How are you doing? James, you've got the Bulldogs Eels two-leg multi. Yeah, not bad. I, I think both teams more than capable of an upset. And when I say upset, I mean on paper or with the, with the bookies. The Sharks were pretty much unbackable favourites in this one. I couldn't understand why. If you looked purely at last week, okay, makes sense. But all around, Carvey Bar says, if the Sharks and Panthers win, you are so far perfect in the tips this round. Well, we have 40 minutes to go. 40 minutes left in this match. Six points all. It is absolutely anybody's game so far.
How will it finish up? I am really looking forward to the next game. Right here on the Waste to Water Sports, this same stream, I won't be ending it. We will just kick on straight into the next game. The Eels and Panthers should be an absolute cracker. Ugh, oh, another Ghostbusters movie, really? Bobsy says Bulldogs would be a good team if they had a good halves pairing. Absolutely. Absolutely. The halves is where they're still lacking. That is where they're still lacking. Panthers by 12, reckons Carvey. I think the Panthers are still... The Broncos are going to be in a little bit of trouble next week. Is it next week? I think the Broncos play the Panthers next week, and yeah, I think they're in a little bit of trouble. The Broncos? I'm not sold on the Panthers tonight, but I think by next week they will be absolutely firing. Oz Surge says Eels by two or Panthers by 30 plus. <laughs> Parramatta can be a bit that way, can't they? Oz Surge. Rocks or diamonds, as they say. <sighs> Next week, Thursday. Panthers, Broncos. Oh, let's do some around the grounds, actually, while we're waiting for the teams to come out for the second half. What's been happening over in Super Rugby Pacific? Full-time Hurricanes have defeated the... The Crusaders are down again. Unbelievable. 14 points to 10. The Crusaders. Another loss. The Reds. Well, that was last week. The Reds knocked off the Chiefs. That was the only game so far today. Wow. What is going on with the Crusaders? The once mighty juggernaut of Super Rugby as the second half is underway and it's the Sharks with first use. Six points all. Oh, Owen Franks was given 10 in the bin and placed on report for a dangerous clear out in the dying moments. Oh, did the, did the Hurricanes steal it? Or were they already ahead and just defending their lead at that point? Carvey Bar says Reds versus Rebels tonight. Who am I going for? The Reds. Queensland Reds all the way. Fifth and last here for the Sharks. Trindle puts it high. A lot of distance on it. Taff takes it. And he is tackled about 22 metres out from his own line. Solid start there from the Sharks, just getting through the set. Very important. Hines races out to make the tackle, and they now drive backwards. Wilson driven backwards and keeping the Bulldogs pinned down here. Just what they need to do. Absolutely anybody's game here. Hoping for a couple of ticks off the multi. That'd be nice. A couple of ticks nice and early in the second half. Fifth and last, Bulldogs. They're up over halfway. Burton puts the kick high. Kennedy takes it. Kickow is back on the field. Good news there for the Bulldogs. Good news for Kickow. It would just be crushing if he picked up another injury and was out for any length of time. Kickow, he'd just be like, can I please go back to Penrith? Big set of six here defensively from the Bulldogs. The Sharks stuck in quicksand. Tackle four. Trindle forced to kick early. Looking for a 40-20. He puts it out on the fall. And the Bulldogs win the early exchanges of the second half. It's out on the fall. Just trying to chew off a little bit too much there. Trindle. He had a good angle. 
Nice angle on it. Just overcooked it. And the Sharks will now have to defend. 30 out from the line here. The Bulldogs, a full set of six. Pressure incoming here for the Sharks. Short pass off the shoulder to Hughes. And Hughes draws in the defenders. Marnie goes over the far side where Burton is waiting. Cut out pass to Crichton. Crichton steps, beats Ramian. Is taken down by the cover defense. Tackle three here for the Bulldogs. Marnie out the back they go. Cut out pass, fight across to Taff. Taff steps Talakai. He's taken down by Wilton on tackle four. Mitchell Vela Sport, ahoy there. I go for the Sharks. On oh, numbers here to the left for the Bulldogs. Kick out. Steps back, goes on his own. And he's taken down centimeter short on tackle five. Burton grubbers into the end goal. Katoa does well to collect it. And it's going to be a goal line dropout. Good result there for the Bulldogs. David Rucker Davidson, ahoy there. I wish good luck for the Bulldogs. I wish good luck for everybody. Goal line dropout incoming here for the Sharks. Do they go short? Probably not. Oh, they're going to make a fool out of me, aren't they? It's a low flat kick. Not a lot of distance, really, from Hines. He was looking for the touchline. Sharks, goal line restarts. They look for the sideline. They don't get caught up in this short dropout business. They back their defense from far out. Bulldogs, another attacking opportunity here. Hutchinson to Burton. Kick out on the charge. Through the hands to Crichton. But they had no extra man there. No space to work with. Bulldogs are caught. Kick out in at dummy half. And there's Marnie out at first receiver. Hutchinson. It opens up for him in midfield. But it closes just as quickly. Quick play the ball though. Marnie. Cut out pass to Preston. Preston. Draws in five defenders. It takes to drive him backwards. Tackle five. Crash ball. It goes to nobody and dived on by Dale Finucan. And that was a nothing. Last play from the Bulldogs. Much like the Sharks to end the first half. Penalty to the Bulldogs though. Right in front. They take the two here, surely. Take the two. They were offside by a mile, the, the, the Sharkies. Oh, it's a scrum. Okay, it wasn't a penalty. That's the second time tonight that's happened to me. I thought it was a penalty. Jason Taylor, the boot. Oh, they've made a mistake on tackle one here, the Bulldogs. Matt Burton's dropped it on tackle one. Yeah, Jason Taylor. Didn't he play for North Sydney as well? The immaculate boot. He would kick them from everywhere. JT, Jason Taylor. Well tackled from Nico Hines and supported over the top by Braley and the ball spills out. Big mistake there from the Bulldogs. The Sharks off the hook. The North Sydney Bears, I can tell you, even though I never went for them, I always, I always liked their jerseys. I feel like the Bears always had a really cool jersey, especially the old predominantly red one with the black rectangles. The Sharks, can they take advantage of that gift they were just given? Talakai bumps off one. Goes up over halfway. Looking for a quick play of the ball. Greg Florimo. Yeah, I remember him. Six again for the Sharks on the halfway line. Hazelton is picked up and dumped by Kikau. Braley dummies right. Goes down the short side on the left. Hines is caught with the ball again. Just had words with Talakai after that. This is where I want you, mate. 
This is where I want you running. Blindside play again. Brayley goes on his own. Dummies gets the offload to Finucane. Finucane back to Hines. Hines beats the first defender. Still going, Nico. Tackle four. They're 12 out, the Sharks. Trindle to Williams. Williams is caught a little high there, but it'll be play on. Fifth and last, 10 out in front of the post. They go to the right where Trindle waits, puts the grubber kick into the end goal. Taft does extremely well to collect it. And the Bulldogs have it a meter out from their own line. James says, Greg Florimo used to be my team's fitness coach. Nice. Back in 2005. Viking Axe, ahoy, mate. Curran takes a hit up now for the Bulldogs. Tackle four. Back inside their own half. They had a prime opportunity early in this second half. They, But the Sharks had a prime opportunity to end the first. And now Matt Burton spots a gap straight up the middle. One to beat. Molotalo gets back in cover defense and shuts it down. Fifth and last. 25 out. A great break there from Matt Burton. Hutchinson now puts it high. The Sharks not numbered up on the left-hand side. Katoa does extremely well to get up and take that ball. Mel, ahoy there. How are you doing? David Rucker Davidson says, I think Sharks home ground, but they will never win. Bulldogs 1-12. Through the hands now, Hines in front of his own goal line. Inside pass to Talakai, and now it opens up for Talakai. Gets it back to Hines. That's the play that they communicated earlier. On the halfway line, though, is where you do that stuff, boys. Not 10 metres out from your own goal line. That's risky business. James, cheers for the super chat, mate. I'm still not doing shots, but I will have a nice big swig. Well, that, was, that wasn't really a big, big swig. But uh, anyways, cheers, James. Clearly the super chat leader. Here's three bucks for a Parramatta Panthers multi. Well, uh, what do you want me to put on? <laughs> Actually, we'll, we'll do it at full time in this game. You tell me what, what you want me to bet and I will put $3 on it. I'll actually, I'll match, I'll match your $3 and we'll put a $6... Multi. I mean, just make it something absolutely ridiculous and let's just see how it goes. Tackle four here for the Bulldogs on halfway. Marnie scoots out a dummy half for tackle five. Still above ground, so doing okay. That's great to hear. Kennedy takes it and spots a gap. Will Kennedy goes upfield. Steps around Blake Taff and is caught by the cover defense of Preston. Plays the ball on halfway. Sharks for good front football here. Molotalo puts Katoa straight through. Katoa is 15 out and loses the ball. Jesus H. Christ. Katoa drops the ball. He's had a shocker tonight, Katoa, on attack. Great scrambling defense from the Bulldogs. And I say it a lot, but this has the makings of one of those games where nobody wants to win. Bulldogs have it back. They've raced through three tackles here, now tackle four. They're still their own side of halfway, which is ridiculous considering where they started this set. Now it opens up almost for Burton again. Fifth and last takes Burton out of kicking. Hutchinson puts it high, but nowhere near as high as Burton puts it. They've, oh, they've stood back and watched it bounce, the great big goofs. And anyways, it ends up bouncing kindly, but that could have gone absolutely anywhere. No urgency from the Sharks there to get to that ball on the full. <laughs> uh, it's been a pretty good game. It's been a pretty good game, Mel. I think your original phrasing is... Is correct. It is a close game, and close games are often good games. Oh, a big charge here. Now, this is who we needed to keep our eyes on. 
the big number 19 for the Sharks, Tuku Hautapua. I'm probably not saying that right. What a big unit. Blake Taff is going to win a penalty here for the Bulldogs. I would have thought it's caught a knock on. He was taken out in the air there, surely. Let's have a look. Oh, geez, Jesse Ramian is very lucky. This could get overturned by the TMO, can it? Can the TMO overturn that call? Because that was pretty blatantly taken out in the air. Jesse Ramian, very lucky to get away with that. Though the knock-on stands at the moment and extremely hard done by there, the Bulldogs. Christian Kupkovic, ahoy. Game of Mel, probably not tomorrow, to be perfectly honest. Sharks from the scrum, 20 out on the attack. Six points all still. No change to the halftime scoreline. Ten meters out, Brayley to Fanukan. Fanukan dummies goes on his own. Two meters out, crash ball for crash ball for that big unit. What should we call him? He's over the line. They hold him up and drive him backwards. Big Tuku. The big T. Fifth and last for the Sharks. They go the blind side. Jesse Ramian steps back in field. It's been touched by Burton, and that'll be six more tackles for the Sharks. Touched by Matt Burton. Knocked forward. That is zero tackle. They're still on the attack here. The Bulldogs. Surely it breaks open now. Williams takes it to within 10. They stay on this left-hand edge, Hines. Flat pass to Wilton. Wilton, don't you dare reach out, Teague Wilton, and give away a penalty. He almost did. He did extremely well to resist that urge there, Wilton. They're over the line, the Sharks, but held up. Great defense here from the, from the Bulldogs. They're holding on. Look at the size of that man, Tuku. Now they've created some space to the right. Kennedy on the wraparound, puts Katoa on the outside. Great legs tackle. Tackle for the Bulldogs, still holding on. The Sharks starting to offer up a little bit more of a threat in attack. Fifth and last, 10 out. Trendles on the right-hand side, cut out pass to Ramian. Gets the offload away to Katoa. Katoa plants it down in the corner. Surely Raymin was held, though. You would have thought. What more could Crichton and uh, who else was out there? It would have been Crichton and uh, probably Blake Wilson. What more did they need to do? Somehow Raymin gets the offload away and Sione Katoa will score in the corner. No, nobody from my multi. God damn it. No, I have Will Kennedy and Jesse Ramian, not Katoa. That is the same Mel from last year. Mel the Warrior. Try confirmed, and the Sharks take the lead. 10 points to 6. But I think we can go all the way back to Blake Taft being taken in the air. The Bulldogs very unlucky to not get a penalty. Conversion from out wide here, Nico Hines. He's not on his favorite side. I need Nico Hines to get six plus points. Can he do it?
I hope so. This would be four. And I don't think there's going to be too many more tries in this game. Points are at a premium here. From the sideline, Hines, it's on target. It's hooking back. It's hooking back. And it's over. He pumps the air. Nico Hines makes it 12 points to six in favor of the home side. 22 minutes to go. We are absolutely doing the next game, Viking Axe. This stream is going to stay active. We're going to go straight into it. Panthers versus Eels. Uh, yes, indeed, Mel. The Sharks are my team. They did me proud last week. They've offered up a mixed bag so far this week. But they have the lead. 12 points to 6. That's all that's important. Back underway, Trindle to Tuku. Look at the size of this human being. It takes three to bring him down. Talakai now. It doesn't get any easier for the Bulldogs defense. The Sharks marching upfield for Nukin. Up over halfway with ease here, the Sharkies. Tackle four. 40 out from the Bulldogs line. Quick ball for Braley to Tuku. Tuku puts a step on. Almost goes through. Tackle five. Looking for a quick play of the ball. Not getting it. Trindle. Duh. Trindle drops the ball cold. Trindle's done a Moylan on the fifth and last. It was a promising set up until that very last tackle. Braden Trindle at first receiver just drops it cold. He's been studying tapes of Matt Moylan. <laughs> oh, Matt Moylan, the poor son of a bitch is gone. He's left for Super League and he's still getting grief from all those years playing for the Sharks. Yes, don't forget, coming up next, Panthers versus the Eels. A blockbuster doubleheader here on Friday night. I wouldn't want it any other way. As the Bulldogs stay down the short side, Burton thought he spotted a gap, but goes back to Hutchinson for the kick. No pressure at the back here on Will Kennedy, who takes it. Eyes up his opportunities. There aren't any, really. It has been a very long time, Mel, since the Bulldogs have been a top team. They've almost got the squad to get back there. Almost. They're just lacking in the halves. But they're almost there, the Bulldogs. Katoa doing the hard yards off his own line. Ramian now getting involved. Oh, some valuable meters for the Sharks. McKinnis up over halfway. Fifth and last. Keep it away from Trindle. They do. They go to Hines on the short side. Just dinks it in over the top. Finds some space. It's an awkward bounce for the Bulldogs. Taff gets it off the offload and looks up. Thought he spotted a gap, but shut down very quickly. Tackle one for the Bulldogs here. 20 out from their own line. Now trailing by six. 19 and a half minutes to go. It's amazing, really, because the Bulldogs had looked the most likely of the teams to score a try when they get in position. They are now just struggling to get themselves up there in position to make any sort of attack. But yes, Panther Zeal's coming up. Kick out. Puts the step on. Nelly gets through. Well tackled by Nico Hines. Quick play of the ball. Burton. Puts the kick in over the top. It's going to sit up in the end goal perfectly. Will Kennedy puts the goose step on. And he's away. Kennedy brings it back. Can't beat Jacob Preston. But a great piece of work there from Will Kennedy. Oh, he's a solid player, Will Kennedy. There's certainly nothing spectacular about him, but he's just uh, that Dylan Edwards-style solid player. Gets through his work. Cheeky little goose step there to get the ball back into the field of play. 
Tackle four here for the Sharks. Quick play the ball. Hines is going to kick on tackle four. He keeps it low and flat from inside the 40. Looking for a 40-20. The bounce pops up kindly for Blake Wilson. Oh, it was nearly a 40-20. And now a hospital pass across to Taff, but it opens up now. Oh, Taff's been taken out in back play. Keep an eye on that. It almost opened up for the Bulldogs. Still the pressure on this short side. Crichton can't get away from Katoa. Katoa got a kick in the face for his troubles. Walking back to position. They're still short on that blind side, the, sh the Sharks, defensively. They have managed to shut it down, though. Curran takes it up over halfway. Nice to see that Josh Curran has still got that fancy headgear. It's a true work of art. Hutchinson dummies goes on his own. Shut down by Teague Wilton in a great legs tackle. Fifth and last for the Bulldogs. Burton in midfield. It's high. A loopy bomb. Nobody wants anything to do with it. Katoa gets there in the end and then steps kick out and brings it back 10 meters out. Well done there, Katoa. Credit where credit is due. I've been hard on him this game. But he's done extremely well there. But he looks absolutely spent. Sione Katoa. I wonder if we've got any backs on the interchange. Because it might be time to think about using one. Katoa is absolutely spent. And I think if the Bulldogs notice this and start targeting his edge on defense, it could open up for them in the dying stages. There's no way he gets through 17 more minutes. Fifth and last for the Sharks. It's another good kick in behind from Hines. Looking for a kind... But he's got a 40-20 Hines, has he? Oh, he might have just been outside the 40. This could be very close. Are they going to look at it? Oh, he's out, well outside the 40. <laughs> okay. Never mind. He took about three steps outside the 40. Great kick from Hines, though. Nonetheless. And the Bulldogs are just pinned down on their own goal line again. 16 minutes to go. They're just trapped down here. Hines has done extremely well tonight. Just controlling this game. Offload to Crichton. Crichton gets it to Burton. Here we go. There's Katoa. Makes his one-on-one -on -one tackle. Good job, Sione. Tackle three for the Bulldogs. Kick out. He is still fired up from the first half ever since he had that try disallowed. Back up to the halfway line. Here are the Bulldogs. Oh, and a dropped goal by Hutchinson. What's happened there? Drew Hutchinson got the dropsies. And this will be Sharks ball on halfway. Jason Taylor is clawing in his own face. That was so bad. <sighs> he was going for a dummy. I'm pretty sure he was going to dummy and step back off that right foot and go on his own. But the ball just slipped out. So it sort of became a half pass to no one and just went straight forward. It does look a little bit slippery out there, in fairness. 15 minutes to go. This game is starting to drag on a little bit now. Somebody somebody needs to break this game wide open. Could it be Talakai? The Sharks will have the first chance at doing it, though. Breaking this game wide open, I mean. Tackle three. 25 out. Hines. Oh, the short ball was on there. Nico didn't spot the support. Tackle four. Back inside the red zone here, the Sharks. Benukin at first receiver. That's what you want. Trindle passes it on to Wilton. Wilton gets the offload back. And the Bulldogs come through and steal it. And this is still play on. Karaz nearly scampers away. But he read that well, Karaz. And the Sharks come up with nothing on attack once again. 13 minutes to go. I've said it a couple of times tonight, and it continues. It just, you get the feeling like no team, no team wants to win this game. They're both trying their absolute best to lose it. It's got those feels about it. They're obviously not. 
obviously both teams want to win and both teams are trying to win, but you wouldn't know it with some of the plays that have been going on. Fifth and last again for the Bulldogs. 40 out. Burton goes high. Not a lot of distance. And the Sharks can safely stand back and watch this one. Bounces back for Crichton. Crichton puts the kick in. Beware the second kick. But Will Kennedy is perfectly positioned and secures that ball at the back for the Sharks. And it is now the Bulldogs who are looking a little bit clueless in attack. Katoa still getting in and taking hit-ups. He looks absolutely spent, the poor guy. I bet he can't wait for full time and a nice hot shower and a rest. Hines dummies the kick on tackle four, fires it out to Rudolph. Fifth and last, just short of the halfway line here, the Sharks. Hines, oh, they're going to run here on the fifth and last. Wilton goes into a gap, flick pass to Talakai. Talakai puts the grubber kick in, and Mulatalo gets a boot to it. It pops up for Mulatalo, and that is the most arsy try you'll ever see in your life. The Sharks got some very good bounces of the ball there. Some fantastic work from Nico Hines running on the fifth and last. Molotalo gets the try, which is nice because that's a tick off our multi. Nico Hines is now trying the conversion to get six points for him. It's right in front of the post. So that will surely be a tick on that one. We suddenly have two ticks off the multi with 12 minutes to go in this game. What a pass from Teague Wilton. Molotalo gets a boot to the ball and somehow it pops up. What a, a no-look flick from Teague Wilton. And then Talakai drops it onto the ground. Oh. And then Mulatalo knocks it on himself. Okay. I better take those ticks away before I look foolish. Because I think this one's going to get looked at and taken away. Only Billy Slater is allowed to do drop kicks in general play like that. Those plays are only allowed for Billy Slater. Everyone else will get called a knock on. I'll leave those ticks off until the try has been confirmed. <laughs> this is what we're looking at. Talakai has... I mean, he's got a boot to it, but I think he gets a boot to it after it hits the ground. Try confirmed! Okay, so the Billy Slater rule does still apply in the NRL. <laughs> It was probably simultaneous. And the Sharks have scored under the post. Surely Hines converts this to get the six points I need him to get. Mulatalo, a tick off the multi. So we have got ten and a half minutes now for Stephen Crichton, anytime try. Will Kennedy or Jesse Ramian, anytime try. This bet that looked like it had zero chance suddenly is on for the last 10 and a half minutes. Hines puts it over. The Sharks lead by two converted tries. Who was it in the chat room? Somebody in the chat room said Sharks by 12. And that is a prediction that's looking mighty good at the moment. The Sharks lead by exactly 12 points. 18 points to six. The Sharks lead. <clears throat> the Bulldogs get us back underway. And they come down with it. Karaz has got it. It opens up now for Taff. Taff is taken down in cover by Ramian. The Bulldogs aren't out of this yet. Two converted tries in 10 minutes. Burton takes on the line. A try to Stephen Crichton would be nice. Very nice. Kurt Mann slips into the playmaker role. He just settles things down in front of the post here for the Bulldogs. Tackle three. Marnie out the back to Hutchinson. Hutchinson almost drops it again. 
wasn't able to get anything going there, Hutchinson, because he just had to slow down and catch the ball in between his legs. Kick out. It's loose out the back and the Sharks dive on it. Has it come off a Sharks player? No, it hasn't. Oh, the Bulldogs scrappy as the panic starts to set in. That was a golden opportunity there, gone begging. The Sharks have shut up shop a little bit. You Nine minutes is still enough time for a team to make a comeback. I hope they keep playing, and that they do. Kafusi offloads to Mulatalo. Mulatalo takes it up to the 40-meter line. Sharks ball on tackle four, their own end of the field. McInnes. Just takes the hit up. Tackle five. Not doing anything crazy here, the Sharks. Hines on the blind side. Just puts it low and flat and over the sideline. Controlling the last 10 minutes of this game, Nico. He's really stepped up, I, I, I feel, this year. Nico Hines. It's only been two games now, but... <clears throat> I think he's really stepped up his control of the game. His kicking has definitely improved. In that aspect. And that is a low ankle pass to Blake Wilson. That's not what you want on tackle one coming out of territory. He's done well to hold it though, Wilson. Karaz. Mitchell Vela Sports says, there goes my margin. You had Sharks by four. Hey, it's not over yet. There's still eight minutes to go. Eight minutes to go. The Bulldogs have the ball. Hutchison out the back to Taff, who just passes it on and through the hands. The sliding defense of the Sharks shuts that one down without any real threat. Seven and a half minutes left. The Bulldogs still inside their own half. Man runs across field, links up with Burton. Now they've got the overlap. Crichton throws a forward pass, and that shuts that down. A forward pass from Stephen Crichton. It was on there for the dogs, though. David Rucker Davison says, much, much Bulldogs will be 1, one to 12 from PNG. Seven minutes left. The Sharks have a scrum down 40 meters out from their own line. They could put the game to bed here, the Sharks, with a solid set of six. <laughs> Would they even be thinking drop goal here, the Sharks? Could they be thinking drop goal? We'll find out. Tackle two. There's Kafusi with a nice charge. They've got tackles up their sleeve. They've got room to work with. They're a little bit far out at the moment, I think, the Sharks. Zo, Dar, ahoy there. <coughs> sharks. Through the hands they go, Trindle to Kennedy. Kennedy to Talakai. Gets the pass out to Mulatalo. Steps back in field, Mulatalo. Looking for another offload, and it is a match-winning try for Teague Wilton. That will do it for the Sharkies. 22 points to six. The conversion to come. The Sharks have won. It fires up again between the two players. Well, not two players. Between the two teams. As the Bulldogs know, that try probably resigns them to defeat with five and a half minutes left. I thought we were on there for the... For the multi, again, Kennedy was lurking around, but it was Teague Wilton there to grab the offload. The match-winning try, surely, for the Sharks. 22-6, kick to come. Hutchinson it is in cover defense that's fallen over. Muppet says the dogs are doomed. They were a lot better this week, at least. Muppet, they were a lot better. The score has ended up blowing out a little bit in the back end of the game, but they were much better this week. So they're getting there. 
is what I'm suggesting. They're uh, they're they're headed in the right direction, albeit extremely slowly in the right direction. But at least extremely slowly in the right direction is a lot better than going backwards. You certainly couldn't say they've gone backwards this week. It was another tiny step forward. Speaking of resigning yourself to a loss, I've resigned myself to the fact that this multi is not going to get up. We got Mulatalo anytime try. We got Nico Hines six plus points. But it's not looking like we're going to get two tries in the last four and a half minutes. As Hines moves in, it's hooking back. It's hooking back. It's off the upright and over. It is off the upright and through. Nico Hines, a perfect night with the boot. And it is 24 points to six in favor of the Sharks. When was the last time the Sharks have gone 2-0 and to start the season? Two really rugged dogfight victories as well. This game was a lot closer than the scoreline suggests. Short kickoff. They had to do it, the Bulldogs. They're up again. Karaz loses it forward. The Sharks come away with it. They'll get... Oh, double knock on, says the referee. And it will be Sharks feed into the scrum. Four minutes to go. 18 points the difference. I don't think I have a bet return. Do I have a bet return on this one? Let's have a look. I might have a bet return. I can't remember if this was a bonus bet or not. No, there's no bet return on this game. That's a shame. Bugger. Scrum down for the Sharks, though, as this game winds down at three and a half minutes. There'll obviously be nothing too fancy from them. They will just wind this clock down, take the W, and focus on next week. Yeah, James says, get ready for the biff incoming in the next three minutes. McInnes to Nikra, dummies, goes to ground. Tackle three for the Sharks, up over halfway. Big gap opens up here for McInnes. He's taken on tackle four, front foot for the Sharks. Hines puts the kick in, in behind the line, looking for the side. Well, he's looking for it to sit up just in the field of play. It does. And Talakai is there to take Taff. Centimeters out from their own try line here, the Bulldogs. And a mistake here would certainly just, uh, the Bulldogs would explode here if there's an error. It would be all too much for them. It's threatened to blow up so many times. Throughout the course of this game. Through the hands to kick out. Shrugs, shoves off Ramian. Ramian comes back at him though. And Nikara around the legs. And kick has been kept very quiet in the second half. I'm not convinced he's at 100%. Taff runs sideways across the field. <laughs> James says to the Sharkies play, sign James Brown. James Brown. <laughs> Nope, that's just that guy's new hairstyle. <laughs> We're going to call him James Brown from now on. Sharks have the ball back now. 30 out from the Bulldogs line. Nikola picked up and dumped in a two-man tackle. Crichton and kick out there. The former Panthers players. There's James Brown out the back to Kennedy. Hines, a no-look harbour bridge pass over to Mulatalo, who just shrugs off Wilson like he's not even there. Slapped him away. Tackle four, the Sharks, one minute to go. They want more points for Nukin to McInnes. Wrapped up in midfield on tackle five. Braley doesn't know where to go. Nico Hines is going to take a shot at drop goal. A little bit of droppy practice. I'm waiting for the referee's signal. He's kicked it. Nico Hines taking some drop goal practice. 
Why not? 25 points to six. Jeez, this has done my margin in as well. Stop scoring points, you fools. Just stop it. No more points. What was my margin? Eight. Yeah, I went Sharks by eight. Stop scoring points. Hawk on crack, 49. Ahoy, mate. Dogs got smacked. A lot closer than the scoreline suggests. In all honesty, much closer game than the score. The scoreline has blown out in the last sort of seven or eight minutes. But it was on a knife's edge for a long time. It was really a good game. But once the Bulldogs fell out of touch, they just went to sleep. James Brown with the hit up. Okay. The three leg... Uh, we're doing a six leg multi. Funded by James. It's full time sounds. All right. That's full time here. 25 points to six. What a victory for the Sharks. Really impressive stuff, really. They had to fight for that for, for most of the game. Planet Hunter, ahoy there. It's a hard gig. Indeed, indeed. All right, I'm going to have a very quick break. Don't forget, coming up straight after this, Panthers, Eels. But first, I'm going to have a quick break because I really need to go piss. I'm sure you all needed to know that. I'll be right back. All right, Waste of Water Sports, full time here. The Cronulla Sharks, the home team, getting the job done against the Bulldogs. Good job from the home team. Okay, so as we get ready for the next game, I'm just going to switch my camera off for a moment. And I'll get things uh, ready to roll here for the next game. We are firing straight into it. The Panthers and the Eels should be a great game. Really looking forward to it. And we've got to try and get in and uh, get a multi set up very quickly before this game gets underway. Let's see how we go. I've still got time. I've still got seven minutes. That's plenty of time. Seven minutes is all good. Hometown music. Ahoy, mate. It was a great win. A very hard-fought win. Second week in a row. Second week in a row. Very hard-fought. Which is what you want to see. It was a lot closer than I would have liked it to have been. I know if you're only just... If you're only just uh, joining us, you might think, what's he on about? What is he on about? It was a big victory. It was an easy victory. No, it certainly wasn't. It was a lot closer than scoreline suggests. A lot closer, in my opinion. Okay. Panthers, Eels. <sighs> Look, I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Eels win this game. I've said that. 
we are going to go. All right, because this bet is being funded by James. We are taking James' advice. All right, so Gutho, anytime try scorer. Where is he? There he is. Am I on any time try scorer? Gutherson's three dollars seventy. Gutherson is three dollars seventy for any time try scorer. I'm be interested in putting some money on that just on its own. But anyway, Gutho, Bryce is that Bryce Cartwright? Is Bryce Cartwright BC? I can't believe. Hang on, no, this has surely got to be f no. Anytime try scorer market Gutherson three dollars seventy. My God. Uh, uh, BC Bryce Cartwright six twenty five. Uh, two legs and it's already a twenty three dollar fifty payout. This is insane. Okay, uh, and um, Eels one to twelve. Hmm. Uh, Eels 1 to 12. Wow, this is going to be a monstrous payout. Three legs, and it's already at 54.20. Okay, now I'm going to add my three. Uh, I will add... I don't, I don't need too much more than that. Well, let's add a player combo. Because I love my player combos. First, let's see how, how long have I got. I've still got a few minutes here. Okay, uh, let's, uh, where's the points, points markets? This is crazy. Player points scored, here we go. Okay, Nathan Cleary, six plus points. Okay, Nathan, oh, what, what if I put, okay, Nathan Cleary, four plus points. Okay. And let's go player A or B to score a try. Let's put the Panthers wingers in there. To'o and Taruva. All right, and I've got to come up with another one. Let's uh, go. Let's go. Will there be will there be extra time? Yes, no. No. Okay. Six legs. <laughs> Six legs. A hundred and one dollars. All right. Let's do it. Confirm bet. Just in the nick of time. Just in the nick of time. Got that in six. Okay, so we've got six leg, multi, Bryce Cartwright, anytime try. Clint Gutherson, anytime try. Eels to win one to 12. Nathan Cleary to score four plus points. Brian To'o or Sonny Taruva to score a try. Will there be extra time? No. So this cannot go to golden point, people. Six legs, six dollar wager at $101 odds. So let's keep an eye on that. That is impressive. <laughs> oh, and uh, Gutherson, Clint Gutherson, anytime try scorer. I cannot believe. I've got a, bo I've got a bonus bet here that I need to use as the Panthers run out onto the stadium. This game's getting ever closer. I might be out of time here. I might be out of time. But honestly, Gutherson, Gutherson, any time try scorer.
Yeah, I'm out of time. <laughs> I'm out of time to get that one on. All right. I won't get that done on time. But Gutherson is a pretty good bet, in all honesty, for any time try scorer. This game's about to kick off. I'm just going to switch my camera off for a moment because I really, I really want to update this screen. Ah, so bollocks it. We'll remember. We will remember. And we are underway. I'll just hide that multi. 100 bucks on Gutho anytime. I can't believe that Gutherson, anytime try scorer, was paying $3.70. That is the most insane thing ever. Gutherson will surely score a try, yeah? Surely Gutherson scores. It's the Panthers' first use, first use of the ball. Another slow start to the season for the Penny Panthers. Through the hands they go, Luai... Calling runners back on the inside. They've got some big names back, though, the Panthers. Mitch Kenny back. Sorensen back. And here is Gutho with first his first touch of the ball, bringing it back into the Panthers' defense. Ah, oh, this is what we've been waiting for. This is the headline event of the evening. Panthers, Eels, and a penalty early for Parramatta. A high tackle. And on report. That's Lua who's been placed on report. Scott Sorensen's come back rock, rocking the Kalen Ponga Slim Shady hairstyle. It seems to be going around at the moment. I wonder what the deal is with that. Why have teams decided that they that it's the year 2000 all over again. Into touch, 40 out from the Panthers line. Golden opportunity here for the Eels. Oh, if Gutherson scores first try, wouldn't that be electric? Regan Tudads cutting back in field. On tackle two. Eels in prime position here. Hopgood. Goes down on tackle three. Six again here. Oh, pressure on the Panthers early. Six again. Moses goes to ground 10 meters out from the line. Big line up to the left. Oh, that was slightly forward in midfield. They get away with it though. Hop good. Cheeky little forward pass. They stay on the left-hand edge. The Eels threatening here. A meter out from the line. From dummy half and over to score the first try is Joey Lussick of all people. Absolutely nobody had that in any multi anywhere in the world. Would anyone have had Joey Lussick to, try, to score a try at all, let alone score the first try? And the Eels have started this. <laughs> well, God, excuse me. The Eels have started this game. They've come out of the gates flying. A try for Lussick. A try for the Eels. Four points to nil early. Kick to come. What a start. They couldn't have asked for a better start. The Eels. DJ Shaq says Jerome Luai in the, in the referee's rap sheet after 60 seconds is not good for the Panthers. Yeah, most certainly not. From right beside the post, Mitchell Moses makes it six points to nil. What a start for the Eels. <clears throat> if only they could do it in grand finals is what uh, <laughs> is what Eels supporters are everywhere are thinking. 
Why can't we beat them in the grand finals? Six points to nil early. What a start from Parramatta. As the Panthers get us back underway, a hush around the stadium. Gutherson takes it. He doesn't want to do the hit up, of course. He gets the ball back, though, Gutherson. Has he held on to it? Yes. So he didn't want to take the hit up. So old mate is just like, here, yeah. Alpha Hangawe says, here, yeah, have it. And now, after scoring the try, Lusick puts it down and the Panthers are on the attack. A big opportunity to strike straight back here. Leota, a couple of meters short on tackle two. They get a set restart. Cleary finds Fisher Harris running the inside line back towards the post. Unbelievable. That's a huge error from the Eels. Yo to Leota. Leota takes them on. Resentful for life. Ahoy. How are you, mate? Kenny sends it left. Cleary's waiting. There's Luai. Luai with the inside ball to May. May goes to ground. Two meters short from the line here. The Panthers tackles up their sleeve. Cleary in midfield to Fisher Harris. Just backs into the defense. Settles things down here. In front of the post on tackle four. Cleary's out to the right. Cutout pass. Finds Isaac Tungo who spills it. As the Parramatta Eels race up out of the defensive line and put pressure on. And that is... That's great signs for the Eels there. Yes, they made the mistake to give the ball back to the Panthers. But Morgan Harper racing up here, putting pressure on. The Panthers come up with the mistake in the face of that aggressive Eels defense. Uh, so, yes, that's what I was saying. Yes, the Eels did make the mistake. They made the error to give the ball back to the Panthers, but then they defended and forced a mistake straight back. Good signs for the Eels. They just have to get through this set of six now to back that up. Sean Lane. Nowhere to go. Tackle three. Big defense from the Panthers. Eels appealing for a penalty. Regan two dads. Driven backwards in a three-man tackle. Up good. Charges up. Valuable meters here for the Eels. From inside the 40, Moses puts it high. Straight down the middle. Dylan Edwards at the back. Military Edwards. Shaky start for the Panthers again to season 2024. Can the Eels take advantage? <clears throat> oh, Mitch Kenny's lost it. It's a penalty to the Panthers, though. Some cheeky hands in there forcing that mistake, says the referee. Marker not square. Cleary puts it into touch. 30 out from the Eels line. Panthers about to go on the attack again. The Eels stood firm for the first attacking raid. Will the defense continue to hold up as Leota gets the offload away to Martin? Martin sends it out to Tungo. Tungo holds the ball this time. And the Panthers are on tackle two. 20 out from the line. Bringing the ball back towards the post. Yo in midfield. Out the back to Cleary. Cleary dummies inside to Sorensen. Goes out wide to Jerome Luai. Plenty of tackles up the sleeve here for the Panthers. 10 out. Cleary goes on his own. Tackle three now. They stay on the open side. Yo in front of the post. Sends it out to Edwards. Edwards gets it to Liam Martin. Again, Morgan Harper has come racing in off his, off his edge. Fifth and last, Cleary kicks it straight to Bryce Cartwright. And the Eels hold on once again. Solid defense. Never looked like penetrating through there, the Panthers. Another great defensive effort from the Eels. What a catch. Reflex action from Bryce Cartwright. 
61% territory to the Panthers, and they find themselves trailing a testament to the Eels' start to this game defensively. Fifth and last, Moses from his own side of halfway puts it high. Edwards is there. Easy take. Runs across field and is taken down by the Eels very comfortably. Taruva to Cleary. Through the hands they go. Tungo will take them on. Gets the pass out to Liam Martin, who flicks it back to Tungo. Here's a chance. Oh, Taruva has to dive forward to catch it. And that has left a try gone begging for the Panthers. The Eels can scramble back in defense, but still, quick front foot ball. Space out wide for To'o. Steps back in field, To'o. Beats one. Gets away from Moses, and then slips 10 meters out from the line. Here come the Panthers. Kenny to Yo in midfield. Out the back to Cleary. To Edwards. Cut out pass to Taruva. Taruva steps. Can't get through. Two tackles left. Parramatta continue to scramble and hold on here. Yo in midfield again. Dummies and goes on his own. Big lurch. Fifth and last for the Panthers. They stay on this left-hand side. Cleary dummies goes back right. Puts a grubber kick in behind the line. It sits up for Dylan Edwards. And Dylan Edwards says, thank you very much. Where was Gutherson? Where was Clint Gutherson? Your fullback needs to be there. Jeez, Dylan Edwards out there looking like Uncle Fester has come away with the try. Oh, I nearly put him in there as well. Dylan Edwards nearly made it into the multi. He so nearly made it in. And the Panthers have struck back. To'o and Taruva I went with. Six points to four, kick to come. Where was Gutherson? He must have been up in the line. Try confirmed. Oh, no, there he is. Over the far side of the field. Gutherson got done in there by Cleary's switch of direction. Dylan Edwards will never score an easier try in his career. Although, probably shouldn't say that about someone playing for the Panthers at the moment. They should have scored so much earlier than that, the Panthers. If that pass hits Taruva on the chest, rather than him having a Superman dive to take it. Six points to four, kick to come. And the Panthers hit back. Cleary from right beside the post. Straight through. And we are all square. Another great game coming up. You just get that feeling about it. It's got the feels. Another frantic start. Just like we saw from the Sharks-Bulldogs game. Six points all. A very slow restart here. Jeez, Dylan Edwards does not look well. <laughs> the poor guy. Credit to him for still being out there playing. <laughs> Dylan Edwards looks like Alex Caruso, says Bobsey. A really, a really fit, a really fit Uncle Fester. If Uncle Fester decided to get in shape and play rugby, there he is. Six points all to all to told to go back to the mark to play the ball. Just trying to steal an extra meter or two there. The Panthers. Yo, he's had a fantastic start to the game. Isaiah Yo maintaining his feet. They couldn't bring him down. Leads to a quick play the ball. There's Edwards in midfield. Up towards halfway and beyond. Panthers on tackle five. Cleary kicks, kicks high. Gutherson moves forward, takes it on one knee. 
And the Eels have the ball back. Can they mount something here, Parramatta? It was a good start, but then it sort of became all Panthers and they defended valiantly until finally it cracked. Now they've got a chance with the ball again. Can they come away with something here? The Eels. Just one out stuff at the moment, just trying to get some yards. They stay on the short side. Brown feeds it on through the hands. Fifth and last, the just outside the 40. Moses puts the kick down towards the corner. Dylan Edwards is there. Well positioned again, takes it on the full. Panthers bring it back. Edwards gets away from the first tackle. Yes, but then he's wrapped up by Penasini. Luai in at dummy half. Sends it out to Toto. Both teams completing six out of seven. 86% completion rate. Both teams. Up to halfway on tackle three. The Panthers. Yo out the back to Cleary again. Short ball to Liam Martin this time. Geez, if it went out the back to Edwards, they were all way down that right-hand edge. They stay on the short side, but no. Says Nathan Cleary. We'll go back open. Fifth and last. Cleary's kick. It's high. It's contestable. Pressure on Gutherson. Oh, what pressure, says Gutherson. And he steps the first tackle to boot. Now scrambling to get a play of the ball away, Gutho. They've just uh, kept them pinned down here. There's Beavers looking unsure in the coach's box. They've just p pinned them down here. The Panthers have done extremely well after that ferocious start from the Eels. The Panthers have just ground away, and they've just constantly kept the uh, the Eels pinned down in their own territory. Moses forced to kick on tackle four. They were going nowhere. Looking for a 40-20. Moses just doesn't get the bounce. It hooks back in field, and Taruva can bring it back for the Panthers. They've just... Ground away here, the Panthers, and got themselves ever so slightly ahead in this contest. All locked up on the scoreboard, of course, where it counts. But the momentum just, just with the home side at the moment. Up towards halfway, they go again. Good field position. Sorensen. Up over halfway. Yo in midfield, right where he loves to be. At the back to Cleary. Cut out pass. Puts Tungo into space. Tungo is just brought down by the ankles. Gets up, goes again. Ducks under the cover defense. Dylan Edwards is there in support. Cleary. Now, Liotta steps. Liotta goes straight through. Liotta puts the head down and scores. Moses Liotta has made something out of nothing there. And the Panthers take the lead. And now... Some very, very testing and worrying signs for the Parramatta Eels. How do they respond to this? This will be critical for the Eels. How do they respond? Do the heads start to drop? Moses Leota stepping his way through. Gutherson can't get across and shut him down. Nathan Cleary drawing the defense, and it is Joey Lussick. Joey Lussick has been completely bamboozled by a prop. The little hooker has just been completely sidestepped. Rugby League Live 4 style by Moses Leota. What an amazing effort that was from Big Moses. Moses parted the blue sea. Well, they're not wearing blue tonight. The blue and yellow sea. And the Panthers are about to lead 12 points to six. And Nathan Cleary is about to get his fourth point. So that's, that, that's a tick. We've got one leg ticked off, James, from this big six-leg multi. There is Nathan Cleary's fourth points. That is Nathan Cleary, four plus points ticked off. But that's about it so far. The other five legs are still, 
are still out there. A real test of character now for the Eels. <clears throat> I have no doubts they'll respond. Oh, Bailey Simonson has failed. A HIA. It's all good. He's not in our multi. But uh, there we go. Bailey Simonson off. So Morgan Harper, I, I dare say, will stay out on the wing. Because he was out there covering anyway. So he may as well just stay there. And uh, somebody would have come on then to fill in at center. So, yeah, I would say Harper shifts out. Harper will shift out to a wing and, uh, yeah, somebody else will shuffle across and cover the center. But, um, yeah, that's not what you want. You don't want to lose a player this early. Sc scratched out for the HIA. First set of six after points. The Panthers tackle four. Make it up to their own 40-meter line. Sorensen grinding for some extra meters. Fifth and last. They're over halfway again. Panthers. Luai is going to take the kicking duties this time. Gutherson under pressure. Does well. Surrenders in the tackle. Vobsey put two bets on. For this game, one was Para to win, the other was Panthers 1 to 12. If I somehow lose money, I'll be sad. DJ Shack around the grounds. Reds are coming the Rebels up 33 points to 7 at half time. Oh, the Reds are on fire. <clears throat> but it is only against the Rebels, so let's not get too carried away, Reds fans. Gutherson gets the ball from the offload. Nowhere to go, though. Big defense. The Panthers have just got them pinned down here again. Uh, we've got one leg ticked off already. Mitch, Mitch, Mitchell, Mitchell Vela Sport. One leg ticked off already. Nathan Cleary to score four plus points. That one's done nice and early. <clears throat> and the beauty of it, the beauty of this multi is I've got a bet return on it. So any leg fails, we get the money back as a bonus bet. So we're done. We're we're good. We might not win, but we now have no chance of losing. So we'll see how it goes as this game continues on. I'll try it half time and get it up on the screen. I just ran out of time before this game kicked off. Through the hands now, the Panthers put to River into space. Harper's across to shut him down, though. The speed of Morgan Harper. The Panthers are on the attack again, though. A couple of tackles left. Inside the 30, they go. Fisher Harris backs into the defense and just sets up this fifth tackle option where they go to the blind side, the short side. Cleary puts a little chip in over the top. It pops up for Gutherson. But a wall of Panthers jerseys there to meet him. And the Eels are bringing it out from their own 10-meter line again. Again. They are just getting absolutely slugged down here, the Eels. The Panthers are just controlling their home turf. Junior Polo needs a big run, and that is a big run. Some valuable meters for the Eels. And now Regan Tudads with a big charge straight over the top of Fisher Harris. They need more of that. And now Mitch Moses has been caught on tackle five. Gets up, goes again, somehow finds a gap. And he is brought down inside Panthers territory. A penalty to the Eels. A penalty to Parramatta on the back of all that. So that has worked out all right for them in the end. Oh, Jerome Luai's tripped Moses. Jerome Luai did some fantastic work to get up nice and early and put pressure on the kick. And he's on report again, Jerome Luai. He's tripped him. Parramatta now on the back of those two runs. One from Paulo, one from Regan Campbell-Gillard. And here's Paulo again. They're two big name, big name forwards trying to turn this game around for their team. You love to see it. Brown with the flat pass. Puts Sean Lane straight through a big hole. 
and Sean Lane will score and the Eels are back. We're about to be all locked up again here. 12 points to 10. Sean Lane scores under the post. An easy conversion incoming and we'll be all locked up and the Eels have responded. Junior Paulo and Regan Campbell Gillard have put their hands up and said, get on our backs. We'll take you there. And they did just that. Dylan Brown, a beautiful short pass off the shoulder. And Sean Lane's gone straight through. Liam Martin and Nathan Cleary, untouched. That was a beautiful try there from Parramatta. 12 points to 10, kick to come. We're about to be locked up. Conversion successful, and we are all locked up again. 12 points apiece. What a game this has been. Two tries each already. Not one single player from our multi, of course. Plenty of time left in this first half as well. We could see a lot of points. Maybe I should have gone overs. Overs could be well on tonight. As the Panthers get us restarted. 12 points all. Junior, Paulo, another big run. Credit that man for turning the momentum around. Him and Campbell Gillard, two big bulldozing runs that completely swung the momentum. And they're getting involved again. Paulo and Regan, two dads. Jermaine Hopgood now up towards halfway. Quick play the ball. The pace has just gone up a bit here for the Eels. And now, flick pass out to Sean Russell, who finds some space. And he's, tr he's caught 20 metres out here. Tackle five. They're on the attack again. Moses puts it high. Right beside the post. And it lands. And it's loose at the back. Tongo comes away with it. And the Panthers... We need to have a look. We need to have a look and see what's happened here. It's going up, going up as no try, of course. Well, I don't think a try is any threat here. We just need to see how this ball spilt out the back from Nathan Cleary. So Cleary catches it cleanly. And initially... Now it bobbles and goes to ground. He's lost it backwards. It hits the post. It's loose out the back still. Still backwards. Still backwards. Tungo picks it up. Gets back into the field of play. So it's looking like it's going to be a Penrith play the ball. Tackle one right on their own goal line. Knocked backwards, knocked backwards. Tungo picks it up. No grounding. He picks it up. Oh, it's been knocked on by Parramatta. A knock on by Parramatta, and that is probably the best result that could have come for Penrith there. 
Blake says, are you happy for the Sharks? Absolutely. An another good win. Back-to-back -back good wins for my Sharkies. Very, very happy indeed. Panthers ball, though. 30 out from their own line. Luke Garner's on. Is it? Or is that Lindsay Smith, perhaps? Yeah. Lindsay Smith, that might have been. Ella, ahoy there. Through the hands now. Tungo tries to get on the outside and free up Taruva. But Morgan Harper shuts him down with support. Uh, Ella, welcome along. Do I like Parramatta? I mean, they're not my team, but I don't mind them. I didn't like them a couple of years ago, but... Oh, Luai with the inside pass. And Taylor May trying to fight his way through. Taylor May looks like a an absolute dead ringer for Stephen Crichton. I swear to God. Tap back here for the Panthers. Firing the ball off to nobody, and Mitchell Moses dives on the loose pass. Lindsey Smith looking to keep the ball alive, and Moses puts the body on the line and dives on the ball. I go for the Sharks. A fantastic win for the Sharks earlier today. Well, right before this game, actually. They've offered me a $1.48 cash out. No, we'll let it ride. We will let that one ride as Parramatta 13% territory for the Eels. They need to change that. Somehow, this game's all locked up. Jen, welcome along there. Cleary, the GOAT. Fifth and last, finding space with the kick. It bounces very kindly for Edwards. Straight onto the chest. Taruva keeps it alive now, and Tungo's got space. Tungo takes on Dylan Brown, and Dylan Brown just does enough to tap him down. Edwards gets into dummy half, throws a terrible pass over to Cleary, and now Taruva slips on the dirt, and it's a comedy of errors out there at the moment. But the Panthers have it. Tackle two, 40 out from the line. Panthers with territory again. Luai, short ball to Sorensen. Space here for To'o. It shuts down quickly. Gutherson's there. And they hold him up. 15 out from the line on this near edge. Cleary in midfield. Out the back to Yo to Edwards. They've got an overlap here, the Panthers. Numbers to burn. They must score. Taruva falls, gets back up, reaches out and plants it down. Sonny Taruva. Taruva scores. That's another tick off the multi. You thought they'd bombed it. You thought that Gutherson had read it extremely well. And Taruva manages to maintain his feet just enough to plant that ball over the try line. Twelve and a half minutes left in this first half. They had them absolutely skinned. Posting links. Nobody posted any links, did they? Streamlabs. Oh, N dot clear. Okay. Jen's posted in the chat N dot Cleary and the bot has thought that that was a link. Naughty Streamlabs. Try in the corner for Taruva and the Panthers reclaim the lead. 16 points to 12. Yeah, I looked up and I saw that and I thought nobody posted a link. So there is the second tick off our multi. Sonny Taruva with the try in the corner. Has it been confirmed? It hasn't updated yet on Sportsbet. Have they confirmed this try? I believe they have. Everybody's acting like they have. So it must be all good. So there's the second tick off our multi. It's looking good, James. It's looking good. Just a reminder for everybody, we've got six legs. We've got Parramatta, Parramatta Eels to win, 1 to 12. Bryce Cartwright, anytime try. Clint Gutherson, anytime try. 
Nathan Cleary to score four plus points. That's already happened. And we just got Sonny Taruva to score. And that's going to be a $600 payout should it win. Good start, though. Cleary from the sideline. It's on target. It's on target. It hits the posts and comes back. 16 points to 12. It remains. Four-point lead for the Panthers. A couple of ticks off the multi going into halftime. It's always good. They're happy now, the home fans. Failing to score a try all last week. And now they've come out with three in the first half. Back underway. Luai takes the kickoff. And gives it to Lindsay Smith for the first hit up. Fisher Harris is off. Having a spell. Liam Henry is on. Penalty to the Panthers. A high shot. Ashley Klein says keep it down. And he's on report. Cleary finds touch just short of the halfway line. Jermaine Hopgood is on report for that high shot. There is Scott Slim Shady Sorensen. Lindsay Smith up over halfway. They're 40 out from the Eels line now. Ready to go back on the attack here, the Panthers. Cleary inside pass. There is the first hit up for Liam Henry. Getting involved nice and early. Cleary out the back to Edwards. Edwards takes it to the line. Luai thought he, thought he spotted a gap. The defense comes across and a penalty. A penalty to Parramatta for some reason against Jerome Luai. Actually, Klein's got it in for Jerome Luai tonight. A penalty for obstructing the defender. I'll have to see that on replay. Okay, Sorensen's run through. Yeah, Sorensen's run through the line and Moses has had a Hollywood flop. And once Luai made the decision to play on there, it was penalty. Now the Eels off the back of that touch finder. Keep the ball alive on tackle one. Back across in front of the posts is Ryan Madison. The Eels go from defense to attack. Junior Paulo puts the head down, charges forward, gets the offload away. Gutherson now brings it back towards the post. 20 out from the line now. Parramatta, plenty of tackles up the sleeve. Tackle three. Ted out now, the Eels. Moses is over on this right-hand side. Out the back to Gutherson, to Penasini. Penasini beats one, goes for the corner, and the Panthers hold him up. He's put a foot in touch there, Penasini. Gets away with it. Gutherson's got it on tackle five. He is caught. Ten meters out here, the Eels. No, uh, no dummy half. Moses gets it eventually, though, and crossfield kick falls for Sean Lane. Sean Lane has come within centimeters of a double. Big Sean Lane. He's nearly come up with an absolute banger of a double. But the Panthers do just enough to hold on. Eight minutes to go until the halftime break. What a game we've seen so far. Back and forth. One team's on top. The other team fights back. And then around and around it goes again. My God, you would swear from the TV camera angle that that is Stephen Crichton, but it is not. It's Taylor and May. I wonder if they've done that on purpose, the Panthers, just to confuse the hell out of everybody. They said, Taylor, during your break, make yourself look more like Stephen Crichton. Liam Martin steps and goes straight through a big hole. He's got support from Tungo, and Tungo drops it. The pass was a little bit too far out in front, and Tungo off the fingertips. Oh, a try has gone begging there for the Panthers. And here comes the Biff. Dylan Brown is standing there holding up Taruva and Tango, one with each hand. 
A dead set certain try has gone begging here for the Panthers. They're just they're just lacking that uh, clinical finishing. Hasn't switched on yet. Terrible pass there from Le Liam Martin. Might have actually been passing for Taruva. Liam Martin was potentially cutting out Tungo completely there and going straight for Taruva. But either way, it was a shocking pass. And a try has gone begging. And Parramatta survive an almighty scare right there. The almightiest of scares. Six and a half minutes to go until the halftime break. Parabol. 30 out from their own line. They have just survived a heart attack moment. The Panthers, that's a couple of tries now that the Panthers have left out there. Gone completely begging. Madison trying to get the arms free. Now looking for a quick play of the ball. On halfway they are. Paulo again backs into the defense. Tackle four. Eel stay on the short side. Out the back it goes to Moses. Moses tries to get on the outside of May. May brings him down for tackle five. Where's the kicking option? Gutherson's in the line, but they cut him out. Go to Brown. Brown puts it high towards the corner. Up go the Eels. They come down with the ball. Parramatta still fifth and last. Gutherson appealing for a six again. It's not incoming. And it's a handover for the Panthers. The Panthers now stuck at their own end, bringing the ball back out constantly from their own 10-meter line. Oh, this game is just... Talk about swings and roundabouts. This game has just constantly gone back and forth. It's been an absolute cracker. Living up to expectations thus far. The Panthers with a slight lead, 16 points to 12. Five minutes to go until halftime. Cleary's going to kick very early on tackle three. Finding space, looking for the bounce as well. Doesn't quite get it. A good job there from Sean Russell getting back and cutting that ball off before there was any threat of a 40-20, a miracle 40-20 it would have been. But straight out of the Cameron Smith playbook, that one. Oh, this ball spills out the back from the Eels. They've dropped it. Gutherson has just exploded at referee Ashley Klein. They're going to challenge it. Parramatta will challenge this call of knock-on. Four and a half minutes to go until halftime. This could be a massive moment. There's a, oh, there's a hand on the ball, but there is no raking motion. There were hands on the ball, no raking motion. I feel like Parramatta could lose this one. We need another camera angle. Jimmy Lister, ahoy, mate. The Crusaders versus Hurricanes game was BS. I just can't believe... What has happened to the Crusaders? Another loss. It's incredible. Take away Scott Robinson. Take away Richie Moanga. And the Crusaders are, are getting just a horror run, really, for the Crusaders. Challenge unsuccessful. Clint Gutherson cannot believe it. Or well, inconclusive, they've said. Well, I thought it was pretty conclusive from the camera angle I saw. But they retain their challenge, at least the, the Eels. They retain the challenge, but most importantly, the Panthers have the ball. There was no intent to strip. There were hands all over that ball, but there was no intent to strip. Uh, Jimmy Lister says it was seven degrees out. Two and a half hours in the cold and not worth it. Remember that. Remember um, the Super Rugby final? Was it Crusaders and Hurricanes in Wellington again? And the, the fog? The Super Rugby final that was just in this most immense Silent Hill-looking fog that you will ever see. I was watching it on TV, and we could not see any of the plays. We couldn't see anything. That was some... Interesting times, that one. Cleary, out the back to Edwards. They've got the overlap again. The Panthers, if they can get the ball out, but Parramatta do well to shut that down. 
Tackle four. They must hold on here, the Eels. They just do not want to give the Panthers this sort of momentum going into the halftime break. Fifth and last in front of the post. Five out. Kenny fires it over to the left. Cleary to Luai. It's tapped on. And for the corner goes Brian Toto. Did he get it down? Has he bobbled it? I feel like he's lost it. He's not confident, Toto. He is not looking confident. It's going up as no try. And they might have just completely ballsed up another one here, the Panthers. Toto slips. Didn't have his full footing. Dives for the line. He's short there and loses it. And the Panthers have botched another try. And the Eels hold on. Jeez, when was the last time we've seen a Penrith Panthers team just leave so many points out there on the table? They have... There's at least three tries they've completely blown tonight so far. Three and a half minutes to go till the break. Parramatta survive another almighty scare. World Cup challenge, that would be a try. Well, only if Wigan only if Wigan scored it. As we came to find out. Parramatta. Seven tackle set. Opportunity to hit back. That could steal the lead going into the break here, the Eels. Moses inside ball to Cartwright. Wasn't really expecting it. Does well to hold on though, Bryce Cartwright. Up. <laughs> oh, Dan Jam. Sneaky little bugger. I didn't know you were there. <laughs> we were trying to get our shots in. Mitchell Moses almost opens it up. He's caught on tackle four. Eels get a six again. They stay on the short side. Cartwright looking to get an arm free. A full set of six. They could pinch the lead here going into the break. The Eels have got numbers out to the left. Gutherson takes it to the line. Brown cut out pass was a little bit too early. And Harper is forced to cut back in field and offload. Brown goes to ground. Tackle two. They're 10 meters out from the line here. They just got a little bit ahead of themselves there, the Eels. Junior Paulo backs into the defense, looks to get the arm free. He'll just take tackle three here. Five out. Brown, flat pass, short ball, finds Jermaine Hopgood. Jermaine Hopgood finds the try line, and the Eels are going to steal the lead going into the break because this try is right beside the post. We're all locked up at 16 all. The conversion will surely be successful. Parramatta are going to take a lead into halftime. And this game is so delicately poised. Parramatta have just not gone away in the face of all that pressure and an attack from the Panthers down the other end. The Panthers have bombed comp three complete dead set certain tries. The game should be over. The Panthers should be ahead by another, well, 12 to 14 points at least. They've bombed some absolute dead set certain tries, but Parramatta have said, thank you very much. You don't want the tries down the other end. We'll come up this end and we'll take them. And we will also take that lead from you going into the halftime break. Thank you very much. We're not looking good with the try scorers though in the multi. Jermaine Hopgood, we were so close. Bryce Cartwright could not have been far away there from, uh, from where that was played out. He could not have been too far away. Mitchell Vela Sport, do you just do NRL on this channel or do you do more sports? We do rugby union, we do cricket, we do some UFC, we do some WWE. Uh, not that that's a sport, but it's sports entertainment. Gutherson from one step converts and puts the Eels ahead going into the break. Can you believe it? They've just refused to go away. And Parramatta lead at half time. Well, still 10 seconds to go. The Panthers, do they risk a short kickoff here, the Panthers? There's not really any point with 10 seconds left. 
And of course, Korean women's curling. No. I got, if I could, honestly, if I could figure out, if I could figure out somewhere to watch it from Australia, other than during the Olympic Games, I would honestly love to do some curling commentary. Mitchell Moses takes the kickoff and says, we will have half time. Thank you very much. 18 points to 16, Parramatta. There were long periods of that half where the Panthers were right on top. Parramatta just never went away. Resentful for life, you missed the first try. Who was it? Our first try scorer was um, Joey Lussick, the Parramatta hooker. Parramatta's try scorers have been random tonight. Joey Lussick, Sean Lane, and Jermaine Hopgood. <laughs> oh. Who is my favorite? WWE. Oh, you've got to, you've got to um, acknowledge the tribal chief. Eighteen points to sixteen at half time. Brandy Alexander looks very, very angry on the panel here on Fox Sports. Ivan Storm, ahoy! Ivan Storm says, "Oh, come on, Penrith." Penrith, I was talking about this in the lead up to the game. Penrith struggle against Parramatta. For whatever reason, everybody's got their bogey team. The Panthers seem to have found it in Parramatta. Parramatta defeats the Panthers during this dynasty era more than any other team. But this one's a long way from being over. No chickens should be counted just yet. Two points the difference, a whole half a footy to go. Just to recap our six-leg multi that we've got on. So we've got Nathan Cleary to score four-plus points. Tick. Sonny Taruva, anytime try scorer. Tick. We still need Bryce Cartwright, Clint Gutherson, Eels to win 1-12, to and uh, no extra time. DJ Shaq says, what a game. It's been fabulous so far. 18 points to 16. Oh, I do put them on the screen normally, of course, resentful for life, but because we did this one a little bit differently, um, I let the chat room... Well, I let James... James did a super chat, and uh, so I let James select the choices for me. So because I didn't... Well, he picked half of them. He picked three, I picked three. And so because we did it that way, I had nothing set up ready to go for it. It was all pretty random. G. Ransfield, ahoy! Penrith won't go three in a row. I think if, I think you mean four in a row. I think because they've if you're talking about premierships, they've already gone three in a row. Six legs, resentful for life. Yes, six legs. It'll be a six hundred dollar payout if it gets up. And much like oh, three games. Penrith won't go three games in a row. This game is on a knife's edge at the moment. It's well in the balance. 18 points to 16. Just a Nathan Cleary missed conversion, the difference between the two at the moment. And when I tell you a missed conversion, so close. It was a near miss. It hit the upright and bounced back. That's how close it was. That's the difference between these two teams. But it's also worth a mention, Penrith have absolutely bombed three dead set certain tries. So Penrith have left some points out there. Three absolute dead set certainties to score. And they found a way, somehow Penrith found a way to butcher them. All right, Waste World of Sports, half time here, 18 points to 16. I'm going to have a quick break and we'll be right back for all the second half in what is shaping up to be 
a game that lives up to the expectations that we had going into it. Very rarely does that happen, but this is looking like it's going to be an absolute blockbuster. All right, second half coming up after this. All right, there we go. Waste to Water Sports, same game, multi. It's up, well, kind of up on the screen. It's half there. It's also a five-leg multi, not a four-leg, but I'm pretty sure, given the circumstances, we can let that slide. Maybe. Or should I fix it? I should fix it. I won't have time to put the photos up. I've had, I've had no chance at all to source the photos that I usually have up there that are always a little bit of fun, but that's all good. We'll stick with the text for for this one. Uh, I should fix the number of legs, though. So, well, in actuality, it's a six-leg multi. I should point that out. So we we better we better make that clear. It is a six-leg multi. And. It's going all right, James. I'm actually, yeah. I mean, I'm. I might be. <laughs> the optimism might be 
a little bit different on either side, but uh, yeah, I'm, I think it's not too bad. Could it be better? Yeah, of course, it could always be better. Why has Suncorp Stadium suddenly appeared behind me? What's going on here? Why has Suncorp Stadium randomly appeared? Jeez. We just can't keep away from Suncorp. Why has that popped up? That is so random. That might be the most bizarre thing. Suncorp Stadium just completely randomly popped up. Hey, that's not too bad. Has that been there all night? That is hilarious. Magic rounds come early. Yes. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if that's been there all night now. Have I been at Suncorp this whole time and not realized it? Oh, because I would have put I would have put Suncorp on I think it's been there all day. I would have put Suncorp on the screen for last night to be a smart ass. <laughs> when Michelle was here. That's probably been there this whole time. Okay, so James, to recap. Let's recap what we've uh, what we've got and what we're waiting for. Okay, so we had Taruva, Sunny Taruva scored. Well, let's go through the list. We've got Eels to win one to twelve. Okay, that's looking good at the moment at halftime. That's on target at the moment. Okay, we do still need Gutherson. We do still need Cartwright. We've got Nathan Cleary four plus points. So let's put a tick there. We've got Sunny Taruva anytime try. So let's put a tick there. And the sixth leg, which is not on the screen. Uh, is that it will not go to extra time. There will be no golden point. Wouldn't it be horribly ironic? Like the worst kind of irony is, uh, is if this game ends up going to golden point. We get everything else. We get absolutely everything else, and it ends up going to golden point, and that's what ends up doing in the bet. Wouldn't that just be terrible? Uh, but the other positive thing to report, James... The other positive thing I can report is that this bet did have a bet return on it. If any leg fails, we get the money back as a bonus bet. Any leg, which means um, since we've already got two ticks off the multi, we have no chance of losing. The bet might not win, but we don't lose. We now don't lose either way because we've got a tick off the multi. We only needed one tick to get the bonus bet return. So if we don't win, we also don't lose, and that's what I like. That's the best possible case scenario to be in. But hopefully we do get the win. Plenty of time left. 40 whole minutes left. For Cartwright, for Gutherson. And you would hope that the Panthers obviously score a couple of their own as well in that period of time so that we keep the margin. But, uh, yeah, as far as multis go, which haven't been going too well so far this season, as far as the multis go, not looking too bad. What I'm curious to know, though, Waste of Water Sports Tipping Contest... Let's try and get a look at, uh, I've fallen down, I've fallen down to fifth with six points. So who went for, did anyone go for the dogs in that previous game? No, it looks like everybody went for the sharks. Oh, James went for the bulldogs. Sorry, James. Yes, yeah, $6 bonus bet. $6 bonus bet coming back no matter what happens for the rest of this second half. But we do, of course, hope that, uh, that it gets up. <sighs> Parramatta are back out on the field. I can't believe that I've been at Suncorp this whole time. That's hilarious.
That is so funny. <laughs> Inside joke, I suppose. It's probably not funny for you guys. Back out onto the field now, the Panthers as well. Second half ready to get underway. <clears throat> Anybody's game. Absolutely anybody's game. This is delicately poised. Ashley Klein blows the whistle. We're off and running. Panthers get the second half started. Gutherson takes it. And Junior Paulo will have the first hit up. What a beast. He has been a, a one-man wrecking crew out there, Junior Paulo. And that's great news for the Blues. The New South Wales Blues at origin time. They will need a fit and firing forward pack. They need a big Regan Campbell Gillard, a big Junior Paulo, all firing and in form as Sean Lane. A very, very uh, not predicted try scorer. Sean Lane. No mistake footy here for the Eels. The first set of six. Trying to milk a penalty. Lusick, just get on with the game. Yes, there's a lazy defender there, but just get on with the game. Fifth and last, they're in just inside Panthers territory. Moses puts it high. Backtracking here as To'o takes it on the full. G. Ransfield says, brain to score next. Isaac to score after that. So Brian To'o and then Isaac Tongo, the next two try scorers. Taruva in midfield. Brian Toto should have already scored one. Well, Tungo as well. <laughs> they both should have already scored tries. The Panthers, as I said before the break, the Panthers have bombed three dead set certain tries. Cleary puts the kick in on tackle four. Gutherson reads it well, takes it on the full. Parramatta ball. Morgan Harper getting involved in runs out of territory. Trying to earn a penalty. Referee not interested. Big charge there from Russell. Doing it through the backs at the moment. The forwards are back there now. From dummy half, Lusick goes on a run up to halfway. Gutherson slots in at dummy half. Moses is on the short side, crunched. Falls into a tackle and is absolutely rocked by Lindsay Smith. Fifth and last for the Eels. Brown shapes to kick. Through the hands they go. Cut out pass to Russell who puts the kick in. Edwards bobbles it at the back but comes away with it and returns it with interest. Something a little bit different there from the Eels. Now through the hands go the Panthers. Tungo breaks away, shrugs off one defender, steps inside Brown and is brought down in a great cover defensive tackle from Tuolungi. Of all people, get him back there to bring down Tungo. Luai out on the left, feeds it on to Sorensen. Sorensen's taken in the tackle. Cleary runs it to the line. Short pass to Smith. Smith looks to offload. Finds Isaiah Yo. Yo is chopped down by Gutherson in a try saving effort. 10 out from the line here, Panthers. They stay blindside. Luai steps back in field. Puts the kick in over the top. And is this a try for Liam Henry? No, they've bombed another one, the Panthers. The Panthers have just bombed their fourth dead set certain try. It was perfectly kicked by Jerome Luai. Liam Henry just needed to fall on it. And they have just bombed another one. The Panthers, four tries, bombed, stone cold. A potential 24 points that they have left out on the park tonight. And that just gives more faith to those that have gone for the Eels. Panthers not icing their opportunities. Through the hands now, Panasini. Parramatta, can they launch an attack? Moses to Paulo. Just settling things down now in front of the post is Hopgood. 
Options left and right. They go to the right. Junior Paulo's there. A couple out from the play the ball. More good work from him. Fifth and last now for the Eels. They've gone 72 metres upfield. And uh, oh, here's Bryce Cartwright. Bryce Cartwright just short of the line. Gets tackled on the fifth and last. That will be handover ball. Oh, he was so close. He's now getting a hand in the face from military Dylan Edwards. And taking offense to that was little Joey Lussick. I call him little Joey Lussick, but he's actually, uh, as far as hookers go, he's quite big and bulky, isn't he? Took offense to the hand in the face anyway, and also a knee to the throat. Yeah, Bryce Cartwright getting worked over on the ground there. Got to be careful here, the Panthers. They don't want to do a, they don't want to do a rabbitos and just self implode. To oh, steps through the first tackle is brought down by Moses. Yo, out the back to Cleary. They're through the hands they go now. Edwards, they've got space down this right hand edge again. Tungo puts the step on. Is taken down in a great tackle there from Morgan Harper. Panthers trying to get themselves back in range. Cleary runs across the defense. Dummies goes on his own. Cleary almost gets through. Well contained by Ryan Madison. Fifth and last. Kenny goes from dummy half. Finds Luai. Luai steps back in field. Luai puts the grubber kick in. It pops up for Lusick. And it's going to be a goal line dropout. A result for the Panthers. Pressure incoming now for the Eels. They're defending well. They're holding on. But still, we cannot stress enough. The Panthers have bombed four dead set certain tries. Nice work there from Jerome Luai. Perfectly placed kick once again. Goal line dropout. Do they go short? The Eels have a tendency to go short, don't they? They love the short dropout. Restart. They do go short. Contestable restart. Tap back from the Panthers. And Edwards has it in midfield. Spotted half a gap. Dummies goes on his own Edwards. He's brought down. Mitch Moses with a great defensive read again. Hawk on crack. 49 says, I bet one cent on the Panthers. Better win. <laughs> Tackles up their sleeve here. The Panthers are in midfield. Yo's over to the right. Out the back to Cleary. Cleary passes to nobody. It's in behind Edwards. Edwards does well to get back and retain it. But Morgan Harper is all over him. And they've lost ground here, the Panthers. Sloppy again. Just lacking that... Uh, just lacking that efficiency early in the season, the Panthers. Yo in midfield, steps back towards the post. We'll just settle things down now on tackle five. A meter short. Kenny fires it left. Cleary's waiting there through the hands. Luai out the back and lost forward by Brian To'o. Taylor May tapped it on. To'o could not collect it around the ankles. And again, just scrappy, sloppy play from the home team. The Panthers yet to gel for season 2024. And another mistake. More defensive pressure from the Eels. Forcing that error. And Parramatta hold on. Offload. Keeping the ball alive here. Parramatta. Brown. Trying to step his way through. They do get some extra meters, though, on tackle three. Looking good so far, the Eels. I don't want to jinx it for Parramatta supporters, but they're looking solid. I guess the thing to, the thing to stay grounded about, apart from the obvious, there's plenty of time left in this game as Moses puts it high. But the thing that I keep harping on about is the, uh, the fact that the Panthers have bombed, literally bombed, four dead set certain tries. Where all they've had to do is catch it, or all they've had to do is fall on the ball, all they've had to do is ground it, and now it's loose out the back. Luai has to go back for it. Fires it back in field to Kenny. They're getting in, in each other's way. The Panthers look like a reserve grade team at the moment. This is incredible. 
I know they got off to a very slow start last season as well, but I don't think they looked genuinely this bad. The Panthers have not had a game where you watch it and go, this looks bad. Tackle three, Cleary is forced to kick to try and swing this momentum around. He finds space, turns Gutherson around, and it's a good chase, and Parramatta will start this set 12 out. But, yeah, the, the Panthers... It's been disgraceful. Big defense. You feel like maybe they've chosen this moment now, the Panthers. They've gone up a gear on the back of that Nathan Cleary kick. Crucial that they keep the Eels trapped down here now. Lane, the try scorer, trying to find some space. Junior Paulo turned the momentum last time. He's wrapped up this time, and the Eels will kick. Moses from inside his own half puts it high. No pressure on Toto at the back. He takes it cleanly, looks up. There's a wall of Parramatta defense. But the Panthers, uh, a successful little, just a successful little set defensively there, you would say, in their attempt to swing the momentum. The early kick from Cleary. Do they do it again, back-to-back? -back? Flat pass from dummy half to Luke Garner. Or to, um, yeah, Luke Garner. Through the hands now. They've created some space down this edge. Morgan Harper nearly comes away with the intercept. They've created some space on this right-hand edge. The Panthers multiple times, and it was looking good again. Morgan Harper got his big mitt out in front of the ball and knocked it down. It's six more tackles. Panthers. 40 out from the line. Big run here from Liam Henry. Straight into the face of the defense. No fear from the young fella. Yo to Smith. Just trying to get themselves into position here, the Panthers, to launch a raid. Cleary out the back to Luai. To Martin. Martin is absolutely crunched from, by Taolungi. But Taolungi's come out second best. He's broken his wrist, it looks like. Dylan Edwards now skips around. The uh, tired defenders, tackle five, Panthers, 10 outs. Cleary over to the left of the post, steps back in field, fires it back to Luai. Luai steps, beats Junior Paulo, gets it back to Yo. Yo's going to put the crossfield kick in. Isaiah Yo kicks for Taruva. Taruva catches and scores. Isaiah Yo with the crossfield kick, and Taruva gets a double. The Panthers reclaim the lead. 20 points to 18, kick to come. But the big thing to keep an eye on is the health of Taolungi. Taolungi is still down in back play. He came off way second best in that big hit that he put on. It was a crushing tackle. It was a great hit, but he came off second best. And he might be gone. The Panthers... Beware the Isaiah Yo crossfield kick. We've seen him do it before. He's gone and done it again, wouldn't you know? And Taruva gets a double. <laughs> Isaiah Yo backs himself on a kick. Panthers retake the lead. It's game on here. 27 minutes to go. This is going to go right down to the wire. Every bit as exciting as we were hoping and expecting it to be. The try is confirmed. The Panthers have the lead back. Cleary will look to convert from the sideline. He hit the post from a very similar position earlier on. And that was the difference between the two teams going into the break. So he's had a sighter. He's had a practice. It was a while ago, though. Cleary moves in. Strikes it. It's on target. It's corrected well, and it's straight through. No mistake this time for Nathan Cleary. And the Panthers lead 22 points to 18. And yes, unfortunately, Tao Lungi is done. He has broken something or dislocated something. I mean, he really looked in a bad way. It was a monstrous hit, but he came off well and truly second best. And poor Tao Lungi, he's on the sideline. He's got the headgear off. And he definitely seems like he's broken something.
a wrist, a shoulder. Mel Midler, ahoy there. Eels 1-12 to is right. Gutho probably won't score, though. Well, I hope he does. <laughs> oh, he could have done it. He's done a wrist or a, a forearm or a collar. But it could be anything, anything on the arm there. Tell long he seems to have broken. Bonds, ahoy, mate. Go Panthers, says Bonds from PNG. 22 points to 18, 26 minutes to go. Still so much time left in this game. What is my favorite sport? My favorite sport through and through is Rugby Union. Unfortunately for Rugby Union, oh, thank you very much for the sub there. Um, I can't quite see the name, sorry. Constantin. Thank you very much for the sub. Welcome to the Waste of Water Sports. High ball, pressure on the receipt. It's dropped forward, and Brian Toto comes away with it. The Panthers have it a meter out from the line. Quick play the ball. Zero tackle. Cleary's got it in midfield. Fires it across to Edwards. Cut out pass to Tungo. They must score here, the Panthers. Isaac Tungo goes on his own, and Isaac Tungo scores the try. And Penrith extend their lead. Parramatta now have some big questions to answer. Mitchell Moses is not happy in midfield. This one's threatening to blow up as well. 26 points to 18, kick to come. The cutout pass, it was three on one. Tonga could have gone back inside to Liam Martin, could have gone outside for Taruva to get a hat trick. Decides to put the head down and go on his own, Tango. Steps back in inside the weak shoulder of Morgan Harper and under the cover defense. Penrith extend their lead. Boy, they looked rattled. They looked headless, the Panthers. And much like the grand final last year, they've somehow found a way. And they've stolen this game straight back from the Eels. Still 24 minutes to go. This will be another test of character for Parramatta. They passed with flying colours earlier. They're being asked the questions again. A true tr test of grit. The heads cannot drop. There's plenty of time. They have to stick with it here, the Eels. 26-18, kick to come. A slightly, a slightly easier kick for Nathan Cleary this time around. He should put it over, no worries. Three from four tonight, two try assists. Another solid game from the little maestro, Nathan Cleary. DJ Shaq says, Penrith starting to look like the side that stormed to the grand final and pulled off the great comeback. 100% Cleary. Oh, he's hit the post again. Nathan Cleary has hit the post for the second time tonight. And it bounces away. 26 points to 18. The Panthers. <clears throat> so not only have the Panthers left four dead set certain tries out there. They've bombed four dead set certain tries. But Cleary's left a couple of conversions out there too. <laughs> Hitting the upright twice tonight. So Penrith, eight-point lead. It could have been so, so much more. And that's what Parramatta have to use to their psychological advantage. They've got to keep their heads up here. The Eels with the restart goes dangerously close to the dead ball line. <clears throat> and Moses Leota... They've got their tails up now, the Panthers. They've got all the momentum running their way. Martin with a big charge. Parramatta just have to hold on, survive this little period. Someone come up with a big run, a big play to wrestle momentum back. <clears throat> but yeah, Penrith looking very solid. Yo, up to halfway on tackle five. 
Cleary will kick for the corner and kind of angling it back in. It hooks back towards the post. Gutherson collects it. Looks up and is caught by Tungo. A great one-on-one -on -one tackle. Putting Gutherson down 20 out from the line. Uh, Dylan Edwards scored. Yes, UFC only fans. He scored the easiest try he will ever score in his entire career. As the Eels win a penalty here, the Panthers just a little bit, a little bit over enthusiastic in holding players down. Oh, he's always, uh, he's always a quality bet. Dylan Edwards, military Dylan. Knows his way to the try line. <sighs> Parramatta off the back of that penalty, up over halfway. Junior, Paulo, another good run. Backing into the fence. Dragging four defenders with him, Junior Paulo. Catch you later, Gamer Mel. Thanks for swinging by as always. Campbell Gillard in midfield. UFC only fans had overs over 26 and a half. Panthers minus five and a half point start. Dylan Edwards anytime. Nice. Fifth and last for the Earls. Brown puts it up towards the post. Oh, it's lost forward. And this is, the, well, he's lost it forward. So that would put the Penrith player offside. You would assume. Penalty out in front. For Parramatta. Worst case result for the Eels here is they've got a touch on it and knocked it on. Or worst case scenario is they're offside or give away a penalty of their own. But Brown, he just overcooked it there. Too far into the end goal and yeah, tackled in the air. This is going to be a penalty to the, to the Panthers. The Penrith catcher has been taken in the air here. And Moses has also taken a player out in back play. They could get pinged for two things here, Parramatta. The worst case scenario for the Eels has come true. <laughs> Penrith will have a penalty here. 10 meters out in front of their own posts. Well, that's the thing, UFC. I, I only ever need one. <laughs> I only ever need one. That's the, that's the way I go about things. I only ever need one. One multi coming off is my whole season. That's why they're always so adventurous. Because they're, they're, low, they're low risk, high reward. All I ever need is one. And it becomes a very profitable season. As Liam Martin spills the ball on halfway. Around the grounds, the Reds have defeated the Rebels. 53 points to 26. They put them to the sword. I wonder how long the Rebels are going to be around. Last I heard that they were, they were on the brink of going into administration. The Melbourne Rebels. Anyway, Parramatta ball, 40 out from the Panthers line here. Tackles up their sleeve. This is where they need to strike. There are still 20 minutes left, but they don't want to leave their run too late. <clears throat> Eels in midfield. Gutherson slots into the playmaker role. Brown puts Sean Lane through half a gap, and it's a forward pass. The offload to Bryce Cartwright. Oh, it was on there. James, it was on there for a moment. We thought Brycey Cartwright was over. But it's a forward pass. This offload from Sean Lane to Bryce Cartwright. I'm not so sure about that. I feel like Parramatta might have got dudded there. But either way, Penrith will come away with the scrum. In control of the game at the moment.
19 minutes to go. Finding some space on the edges now as the Eels' defence starts to tire. It's taking its toll. Mitch Kenny bleeding from the cheek. A few players bleeding from the cheek out there tonight. Oh, I wonder how old mate's going. Remember, remember that hit? The, uh, the Bulldogs player that got the big shiner. Through the hands, and they've created space down Morgan Harper's edge again, and Tungo's away. Tungo puts the kick back in field. Does it pop up for Taruva? No, it pops up for Gutherson. Oh, they are just killing the Eels down that edge. Now, just to explain what's happened here for Parramatta is uh, Bailey Simonson went off very early and failed a HIA. Bailey Simonson, their number two, their winger. And what's happened is um, Morgan Harper... Morgan Harper, who has been playing centre for the Eels, has shifted out to cover Simonson's wing, and they are exploiting it, the Panthers. They are finding so much space because Morgan Harper is racing in. Morgan Harper is defending where you would expect him to be if he was still playing centre, but he seems to have forgotten sometimes that he's actually covering the wing at the moment, and they are just eating up metres out there, the Panthers. They are destroying... Morgan Harper's wing. So that was a big defensive switch that had to happen early for uh, for the Eels. Penrith doing a good job exploiting the space out there. DJ Shaq says Panthers have turned up the intensity. That they have indeed. And here they go down Morgan Harper's edge again. And look how far in field he has caught once more. Again, he's defending in that center channel. He needs to stay out on his wing. And Taruva's hurt here. To Rivers hurt. 17 minutes to go. They've they've noticed it. They've well and truly noticed it, the Panthers. They have got the Eels done for on Morgan Harper's edge. Fifth and last. Cleary steps back in field, puts the kick up. High into the night sky. It's taken by Taylor May. Taylor May looks for the offload. It's touched by Parramatta. It's six more tackles. Sorensen keeps it alive. And Lussick. Retreating, gets the ball, and the Eels are off the hook there. Oh, that would have surely been game, set, and match. But Penrith just rushed things there. They had a full set of six, and they rushed it, looking for the killer blow straight away. There was no patience at all in that play. That's a real coach killer there from the Panthers. Slow play the ball here for Parramatta, appealing for a penalty. It's not incoming. Tackle four, and they're only out to their 20-meter line. They are under the pump here, the Eels, well and truly. Fifth and last, Moses is kicking from inside the 40. Uh, he gets solid contact, lots of distance. Dylan Edwards catches it on his own 10-meter line, but the chase, the chase is slow. Edwards nearly goes straight through. Oh, Dylan Edwards nearly goes straight through for the Panthers. He's brought it back to his 45 out. And a penalty to the Panthers. They're going to get piggybacked upfield. Pressure, big time pressure for the Eels now. The Panthers will put this into touch and they'll have a full set of six once again on the attack. Jermaine Hopgood's off for the Eels. Oh, he's coming back on. I thought he just went off. No, he's getting ready to come back on. I didn't even realize he was off. 40 out from the line now. Full set of six. The Panthers. Leota in midfield. 15 minutes to go. They could make it a very long way back for the Eels if they score here. A very important set of six defensively for Parramatta. Edwards inside pass to La Liam Martin. Martin gets inside the 20-meter zone. Panthers. About to go on the attack again. Cleary in midfield. Runs. Dummies. Goes on his own. Cleary is caught. Tackle four. Nice variety here from the Panthers, though. Leota goes on his own. There was only ever one way that was ending. Tackle five here. Panthers midfield. Out to the left. Cleary waits. Puts the grubber kick in. Clint Gutherson is perfectly positioned and comes away with it. Clint Gutherson saves the day. And returns it for the Eels. They are just holding on by a thread here, Parramatta. 
big defense now, driving them backwards. Unrelenting stuff here from the Panthers. Parramatta are just under so much pressure here. How do they respond? Tackle four, they're just outside the 20, and that's a nice run. Good run there from Madison. Fifth and last, though, Moses will kick from inside the 40. Edwards retreats, takes it on the full, and he'll bring it back to around his own 20-meter line for the Panthers to start this set. Good result in the end for Parramatta. It was a good end of set, a good kick, a good chase. Penrith would like to think they'd be much further upfield to start this set of six on the back of their defensive efforts. 13 minutes to go. Tango nearly goes straight through. A couple of lazy defenders. They just hold on, and they're just stretching them left and right here. Tail and May. Up over halfway. Couple of tackles left. Garner takes it up. Fifth and last. They're 40 out here, the Panthers. Cleary's got it. Cleary puts it high. Not a good kick chase. Oh, but it's hard to take. And it's been tapped back by Morgan Harper. And Harper does extremely well to recover and get back into the field of play. But the Panthers have just really targeted Morgan Harper here. Their attack, not just through the hands, but their kicks now targeting Morgan Harper. And they are just putting him under the pump. The poor guy, you've got to feel sorry for him. He is just getting absolutely peppered. Risky offload, Moses juggles. Comes back, is caught high. Appeals for a high shot anyways, doesn't get it. Fifth and last now, Parramatta. Hot potato stuff. The offload goes to ground. Nathan Cleary goes through, gets a touch on it. It'll be six more tackles for the Eels. A knock on from Nathan Cleary. He wants to challenge the knock on. I think he got a hand to it though. Wow, this game has certainly gone up a few gears. The Panthers have started putting some plays together. The Eels are holding on just in defense, and uh, they're starting to throw some really risky offloads. Well, it's been tapped back. It's off the shoulder of Cleary. Play on at this point. Did he get a finger on it there? Well, Tungo's locked it on there anyway, so... Isaac Tungo has knocked it on. So it's a successful challenge, the knock-on against Nathan Cleary. So what happens there? They were challenging the call of a knock-on against Nathan Cleary, but it's ended up being a knock-on against Isaac Tungo. So the challenge is unsuccessful. That's what they've ruled there. You could almost argue that, hey, my challenge was correct. It was a challenge against the knock-on against me, right? So technically, I was correct. It'd be a hard argument to win, I'm sure, but you could argue it. Parramatta holding on. Eight points the difference. 11 minutes, 41 to go. Regan Campbell-Gillard off the back of the scrum. Takes the first hit up. They've just got a stranglehold on this game here, the Panthers. Everybody, all their big names have just stepped up and just taken this game away from the Eels. Parramatta, it was there for them. It's been there for them. They're not out of it yet. Only eight points the difference. Gutherson, calling runners back on the inside, gets the offload away. Couple of tackles left here, the Eels. They stay on the short side. Moses, dummies. Nobody falls for it, and he's wrapped up. Fifth and last. Brown into the line, puts it high on the short side. And it's lost forward again by To'o. Parramatta have a full set of six now. Five out from the line. Oh, it's called a knock-on. It's called a knock-on both ways. Parramatta will get the scrum down. Will they? Or is it a knock-on against Parramatta first? It's a knock-on Parramatta first, I think. Cameraman's decided to have a nap. Someone send out a, a welfare check on that cameraman. It's like he fell. Oh, it is a scrum down, Parramatta. I thought so. Clint Gutherson, here's his chance to score a try. 
10 meters out. To the left they go. Brown steps back in towards the post. Nowhere to go. Although he's made a pretty good effort at it. 10 minutes left. Parramatta. Tackle one. They're two meters short. Lusick from dummy half. Uh, what a waste of a tackle. Complete waste. They're in the exact same place they were. Okay, reset, reload. Campbell Gillard. Two meters out still. The Eels on tackle three. Six again. That's what they needed. Full set of six. Hopgood backs into the defense. Here's an opportunity now. Lusick from dummy half looking for a double. He's close. He's up against the post. Dylan Edwards can't get out of there. Still tackles up the sleeve here. Parramatta. Off a Hangawe. Runs back towards the post. Keeping it in the middles. Lusick out to Regan Campbell. Gillard draws in the defenders. Can't get the arms free. Good defense here from the Panthers so far. Moses. Out the back it goes to Brown. Brown with the double pump out to Sean Lane. Sean Lane's wrapped up. Tackle four. They've lost ground here, Parramatta. Ten out from the line. Campbell Gillard gets the offload back to Moses. Moses holds up the pass. They send it out now, and they've lost the ball forward. Brian To'o comes away with it. Penrith hold on. What amazing defense on their own goal line. Eight minutes, 16 to go. Penrith bringing it out of territory. They have the advantage now. Eight point, well and truly, I mean. Well and truly on top now with eight minutes to go. They'll be aiming to get down the other end. Get some points on the board and put this game to bed, potentially. Big effort from both teams tonight. Luai on the charge. Gets the offload back to Cleary. Through the hands they go and Tungo drops it. Tungo with the mistake. But they were looking at Morgan Harper's edge again. Seven and a half to go. Twenty six points to eighteen. Eight points is nothing. Well, eight points is eight points, but you know what I mean. In a game of rugby league, that is not a big margin to run down. Parramatta a, a team well known to go back to back. Bang bang. Try try. So it's not out of the question. Seven minutes left. They would need to think about scoring very, very quickly, though. Oh, juggling the ball there. Hopgood nearly spills it. They can't afford any mistakes. They've got to be perfect for this last seven minutes here, the Eels. Campbell Gillard takes tackle three. They're 30 out here, the Eels. Paulo. You get the feeling it could be a big break. A bust straight through the middle from one of those two. Hopgood out the back to Brown. Brown dummies goes on his own. Just held on to by Liam Martin. Quick play the ball here. Gutherson goes. Flicks the pass back inside for Mitch Moses. And Moses loses it. And Penrith defend again. They repel the Eels once more. Another scrum down. Moses has lost his head at the moment. Six minutes left. Panthers defending an eight-point lead. Taruva takes the first hit up. Sorensen now. Couple of good carries here. Penrith just set about doing their work. To'o. Big charge from the little tank. Now Edwards getting involved. Still, Dylan Edwards. The VB hard yards index on him would be immense. Cleary will kick on tackle four. In behind the line. 
Space dribbles it into touch five meters out from the goal line. What a kick from Nathan Cleary. Just slowing the game down. Running the clock down. Just like Nico Hines did in the earlier game. Controlling this match with his boot. Five minutes to go. Parramatta. It has to be now. It has to be this next couple of sets of six, you would think. If they're going to steal this one. They stole the first half, remember. They stole the first half out of nowhere. It's not out of the question, but Morgan Harper. Morgan Harper has had a nightmare, it must be said. He spills the ball. And Penrith will have a full set of six now, just outside the Parramatta 20. Oh, that's a big mistake. Morgan Harper, you've got to feel so sorry for him. He's had to shift out to the wing unexpectedly when they lost Simonson to the HIA. The poor guy was on a hiding to nothing, really. And they have just, they being the Panthers, have just absolutely peppered him, the poor guy. They have been unrelenting. They've just given him no break whatsoever. And if you review this match, you might say that that's where the Panthers ultimately, ultimately won the contest by exploiting so often that wing. Yo now with the inside pass to Smith. Smith is caught 10 meters out. Tackle three. To the left they go. Cleary. Back inside to Luai. Luai spills it. And the Eels. One last shot here. Parramatta. Three and a half minutes to go. They've got to go the length of the field. But they will have seven tackles to do it. The body language is not good from the Eels. Not good at all. Big defense from Penrith, driving the Eels backwards. They can smell blood. The victory is in their grasp. Short side play, Moses on the run to Penasini. Fifth and last, Parramatta, what can they come up with? Can they pull off a miracle? Moses puts it high. Not a lot of distance on it, but it's high. Penrith stand back and they watch it. They're happy to watch it. It bounces straight into the arms of Edwards and Dylan Edwards is away straight up the middle of the field. Well tackled at the back by Jermaine Hopgood, but look at the meters that he chewed off there, Dylan Edwards. And now To'o and tackle two, they're back over halfway. It's not even tackle two yet. To'o offloads to Cleary, Tongo to Kenny. Oh, they've got the confidence now, the Panthers. And it ends up back with To'o. Tackle two, 40 meters out from Parramatta's line. Henry takes them on. Tackle three, 30 out, Panthers. They want more points. Clary puts the kick in. Back towards the post, chasing his own kick. Gutherson's back there. Gutherson steps. Gutherson gets back into the field of play. Oh, he's done extremely well in a losing effort tonight, Gutherson. One of the year's best. The other, I would give uh, Paulo. Paulo and Campbell Gillard have both been very solid again. A minute and a half left. I'd say that it's over now. Eight minutes to go. Gutherson looks to go through the hands. Can't get the ball free. It'll be six more tackles. Parramatta have it, but they've got a long way to go upfield. Now a forward pass out to Harper, and it is called a minute left, and it's just fallen to pieces at the back end for the Eels. It's just fallen apart for them. They were looking so good for periods of that. And no respite for Morgan Harper. That was not his fault, of course. He's not the one that threw the pass. But, uh, yeah, the poor guy. Absolutely no respite for Morgan Harper. 27 seconds to go. 
The Panthers have got the Broncos coming up next week and they'll be happier with their second half effort leading into that match. For the Eels, a bright start last week, a bright start this week, but it just fell away a little bit at the back end. Ten seconds to go. Panthers have it. To oh, dummies goes on his own. He's brought down. Moses. Good defense. Last play of the game. Luai goes from dummy half. Has a little bit of a dance around in midfield and surrenders. And the Panthers, as the siren sounds, 26 points to 18. Victors tonight. It was a slow start for the Panthers, but they just... Ground away, pinned the Eels down. So much of the Eels' ball was running out of their own 10-meter line. Really put them under the pump, and it took its toll towards the back end of the match. And there was just no gas left in the tank for that final push, that final fight from the Eels. 26 points to 18. The Panthers have got the job done. Hmm. What should I order tonight? What should my post-stream eats be? I'm not doing kebabs again. The dirty late-night kebabs after that stream the other week were terrible. I feel like they just... Uh, I mean, this is not a cooking channel by any stretch of the imagination, but honestly, it feels like... It feels like they just... Rather than the ingredients within the kebab being nicely spread across the wrap and fold it up. It feels like they folded the wrap up and then just went tomato, lettuce, the rest of the stuff, onion. They just dumped it in. There were layers. <laughs> there were layers onto one on top of the other. It was insane. UFC Only Fam says, hey, DC, every now and then I refresh and watch some ads. This is my way of making a donation. Thank you very much, UFC. I do appreciate that. I was wondering where our ad content was was coming from. <laughs> I check out the analytics every now and then, and I go, "Oh, um, uh, ad revenue. How do we have ad revenue?" <laughs> Dan Jam says, "Let's get that IBS excited with whatever with extra cheese." Bloody hell, I've already had enough cheese today. I mean, there's no such thing as enough cheese, but I just meant for flaring up the IBS. All right, Wasted World of Sports. It's been a long day for me. I was up early, worked, and had to race off from work to uh, get ready for the stream. Started early, 5 o'clock. I was literally clocked off from work, started the stream. Sharks defeating the Bulldogs. Panthers defeating the Eels. Very, very exciting night of Friday Night Footy. A couple of good games, really close games. I felt the score lines might not necessarily reflect what I feel the closeness of the games were. But a couple of good games. It was good. a good start to the weekend. Full time here, 26 points to 18. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow, I have a uh, very close friend's farewell party. So I don't know what, if anything, I'm going to be able to do tomorrow. But I can say with 100% certainty, we will be back on Sunday, starting off Sunday, 1 30, Queensland time, 1 30. Uh, I'll be doing a pre the pregame for Sunday's fixtures, which are the Sea Eagles versus the Roosters at 3 p.m. A 1.30 pregame where uh, it will be the Generations vodcast with the old Panther, the one that was originally scheduled for the other week, but then I got sick and we weren't able to do it. That will be happening this Sunday, 1.30, as a precursor to the Sea Eagles Roosters game. So we will go, basically the plan is we will go Generations Vodcast straight into the game. 
and then I will re-upload the, the vodcast later on as its own video, if that makes sense. I think it does. Ah, Nichols, ahoy, mate. Go Panthers. Thank you very much, everybody, for your company tonight. Uh, yeah, my voice is starting to go. It's really starting to go. It's been a long day. Uh, thank you very much. I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, as I said earlier, I think we've got a fantastic little community here on uh, the Waste of Water Sports YouTube. So I thank each and every one of you for that. And I'll catch you guys next time. If it's not tomorrow, it will definitely be Sunday. Thank you very much. Cheers. World of sports, eh? Oh, he's copped a head right to the nuts. Tedesco's butt crack. Oh, boy. He's nearly taken security's head off. I have no idea what the wasted world of sports is.